Welcome to Statesman, the podcast where we explore all 50 states with our five senses. If you've come here for history, we'll give you some. But most of this is half-baked opinion, and it's probably untrue. Education, the word of history, bestowing our tabula rasa youth with the gift of indoctrination. Passed down in a never-ending game of lesson plan telephone. We've all heard the bell. Threats of detention and the innocent squealing of a bully's wedgie victim. We've even seen Tommy Sticks flip the teacher a sick bird. And have recited the Pledge of Allegiance, our ABCs and 123s, 1, 2, 3 many times. But as people of the world, students, if you will, with concerns greater than ourselves, Concerns for our youth and the future. Are we going to make like graphs and rise over run to the cause? When are we going to look our teachers and school faculty in the podcast and give them an honest thanks, a salute, and a paycheck thicky enough to make a conservative head spin 360 degrees of a two-dimensional circle? Ding, ding. That's the bell, and we're tardy as hell, but absolutely no cussing. Statesmen salute the teachers. Statesman's back. I'm your older statesman Tim Ferrari, along with my junior statesman Anthony Rossi. Classes in session? Uh classes in statesman. And Stuart Highcar. Teach what you preach or reach for the quiche, you beesh. Wow. wow. <laughs> Back from a veritable summer break of this podcast. Ooh, it feels like a summer break, but class is back in session. You're 100% right, Anthony. And I'm antsy as a young boy who's just spent three months outside on the playground. Hey, you might remember this from when you were first learning to read, but I feel like a wocket because we're right back in the fucking pocket, baby. Hold on. Okay. Like what? we never left. Okay. What is a walk I also don't know what a walk is. is. Huh? I've heard that as a step in preparing some interesting Chinese dishes. Huh? No, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> uh, no, a uh, walk in your pocket. It's a famous Dr. Seuss. Oh. Maybe less famous than I <laughs> thought. I guess I read so. that book many a time. Interesting. I've never heard of it once in my life. Can we get like some, what is like, what is, is it a verb? It's a creature. There's a walking uh, in my pocket. Oh, okay. What about this? What if you added a bunch of uh, like pauses and uh, different um, periods and commas into that book and called it Christopher Walkin in my pocket? <laughs> <laughs> We're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, summer break. So you said a ru- you set a rule which we already broke immediately that there was not going to be cussing on this episode. Who cussed? We are honoring teachers. I said motherfuckers very quickly. I said beesh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a slant. Mm-hmm. I think you could get away with that, but I, I went right for it. Am I am I gonna get a demerit? Wow. I mean, you know, we haven't even we haven't even begun the podcast and <laughs> okay. we're already assembling a system of ranking. But yes, <laughs> Anthony, Anthony, you have a demerit. Anthony, I know you have a degree in ad PR, but the only PR you need to be focusing on right now, your permanent record. Okay. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. It is real. It's absolutely real. And yours is getting thicker by the minute if you keep up that sailor's tongue. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll, I'll hold that sailor's tongue. A the, salty kiss. A, I don't a permanent I don't think the permanent record follows you. No, it does. It absolutely does. When I was applying for my current job, they asked me, you know, we need to get a hold of your permanent record. <laughs> we need a, mm-hmm. a, a a copy of your high school diploma. I I lost out um I, of course, you guys know, I uh, I was offered a generous scholarship to eight Ivy League schools when I applied. Oh, and yeah, right. um, I was I was all set to go to Yale. Um, but uh, unfortunately, the day before moving, uh, they got wind of uh, this time where I made fun of somebody who was downhilling in the boys' bathroom in first grade. And, of course, you know, pants around your ankles at the urinal, butt out peeing, oh, you know. that's a downhill? That's a that's when you're downhilling, yeah. And so that's on my permanent record. And, unfortunately, I was kicked out of Yale. Yeah, I mean, I do that in my private life. <laughs> you downhill? <laughs> Absolutely. I take them all the way off. When's the last honest question? When's the last time you saw a person downhilling? I, in the movies, you know, there's like, there's always that one kid in the movies 
who do you isn't mean, on film or at a theater? Not at a theater. Okay. At a the, you know, Wait, the, what? After the movie, yeah. After the movies, you know, everybody's <laughs> getting out. The dads and their sons are in the ur- or by the urinal. Mm-hmm. And there is at least one kid every time I go there that is full downhill. Yeah. And, and we may never experience that again, guys. Public restrooms, wow. the most terrifying environment I can picture. I haven't used a public restroom since this all began. Have hey, you? Uh, since this all began? No, nobody lets you into them. I've I've had struggles where it's like, man, I really need to pee, and I'm still a 20, 30-minute walk from home. Uh, but you know who doesn't let me into their their bathrooms? Uh, local artisan shops of Chicago. In fact, they won't let me in at all. Something about wearing a mask. I don't know. Guys, you know, obviously it's been a turbulent time. We're back at the at the table. Mm. How have you guys been? We've been living together throughout all of this, so we've been kind of on top of each other for a very long time. You can we, say that again. We took some t- <laughs> we took some time off from recording <laughs> because we wanted to hold space for, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, everything that's going on right now. We figured that no one needed our jokes, but we're coming right back to make them again. That's right. But, we- but, but in this interim, how have you been feeling? What have you been doing to occupy your quarantine time? Oh man, well. I've been going so crazy. I, when was the last time we rec- like actually recorded? They, we had Mohawk and TYGKO kind of do an episode sure. for us like maybe a month ago. Yeah, and they recorded that uh, just a few days before we put it out. But I think the last episode we recorded would be the episode that came out just before this one, if, if all goes according to plan. The Statesman Salute the Post Office. And that is very hard-marked Memorial Day. Uh, wow, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you remember carefully, it kind of destroyed the episode. Also, another... <laughs> oh, yeah. We never got any mail. No. <laughs> another example of how much can change because now the post office is directly under attack by the U.S. government. Yeah, and thank God we made that episode when we did. At the time, it was just it was just some bullying from the U.S. government. That, mm-hmm. Speaking of school, you know, the, the, the post office was getting a little bullied by uh, the orange Cheeto in chief. Uh-huh. Hell of and, a permanent record, by the way. Oh, my God. Trump's permy? Dude. And not the one on his head, guy. Oh, man. <laughs> no, keep going. What if Trump had a perm? That would be twisted. The only permanent thing he wants is office. Mm. He, he'll never leave, folks. Well, um, it, now it's even worse for the post office, right? I mean, uh, I think there's maybe it's just even more bullying. I haven't been totally on that news train. It's um, Trump has uh, instated a postmaster general, which is a funny job. Uh, but he's instated someone who has come from the private sector and believes wholeheartedly that um, the post office would work better if it were a private business. Um, which isn't necessarily false. It would just make it incredibly hard for most people to access it as as opposed to what it is now, which is like a public offering that anyone can participate in. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) So back back to the matters at hand. We we haven't recorded since Memorial Day. Wow, yeah. So a full episode. That's like two months. It feels like it's oh, been about like two 60 months. 60 days? 60 days. I've heard Ooh. gone in 60 seconds, but pod in 60 days? God, brush off the rust. Brushing off. Hey, guys, do you want to all... Let's just... And hey, stay with me on uh-huh. this. Let's all just real quick do a doggy shake and get all the rust off, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ready. <laughs> job. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so back to what you were saying, you've been you've been bouncing off the walls. You've been going crazy. Yeah, and not even in that, that kind of way. I've just been going, I think, you know, dipping closer and closer to a uh, pandemic-induced psychosis. Uh, pandemic paranoia, they call it. Yeah. Yes, the infamous PP. And I think we're all kind of experiencing that right now, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. The Wait, infamous huh? PP. The infamous PP. We're all kind of experiencing I'm that scared. right now. I'm super scared of PP. Absolutely. And what the scariest thing about PP is is that it's sneaking up on you all the time. <laughs> yeah, I you know, I uh I don't know. I I've taken up uh I, I've taken up a lot of art. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm still doing my painting. Not uh, just doing your paintings, you're succeeding in your painting. You know, we're getting there. If you want to see them, I'm kind of posting them at Young Garlic on my Instagram. What a familiar handle. For oh, sure, yeah. yeah. And, and you've been mixing up your uh, the medium on which you've been painting. You're not just doing canvases now. Now I'm doing big wood 
panels, I think is what it would be called. That's like a cool switch. You know, the format of art is such an important part of it. Just like the format of this podcast is is really the bones of the thing. Mm. But I really can't wait until your next phase when you start painting human bodies. Huh. I've already tried. Oh. Don't see below my mm, feet. <laughs> I, under my feet, I've drawn Whoa. portraits of you guys. Whoa! I'm left foot. I... I'm I'm soul. <laughs> you are soul. <laughs> Anthony, what have you been up to? Um honestly, largely just sitting in different rooms, uh, staring at walls blankly. Mm. Or doom scrolling, as the as the children call it. Doom oh my scrolling. God. The kids are always saying doom scrolling. That's an actual term that it's TikTokers like, are using. It's these a Dr. Seuss thing. Oh. <laughs> no, it's just, it, you know, it's an inevitable thing when you, are, like me, are following a bunch of, you know, liberal young people in Chicago, like, you know, like, you know, my peers. Uh, and I've just been, you know, getting bad news constantly for four or five months now. And, you know, every step forward is met with five steps back and mm -hmm. 10 things that scare the shit out of me and a bunch of things that make me feel like shit. And, you know, I, I've been unlearning a lot of old behaviors and learning a lot of really incredible new things and new resources um, and really taking that to heart. But honestly, the majority of my time is just blank, empty space. Like I don't have thoughts a lot of the time mm -hmm. because when I, when I have thoughts, they're so depressing mm. that and the thing is, like, they're the same thoughts that everybody is carrying around right now who's paying attention. Yeah, to some extent, for sure. Right, right. And, and you know, you have to find ways to, like, ease your own personal burden where you can without becoming removed. But the, the digital world, like, social media is a fucking hellscape right now. And, like, I really, truly just enjoy video games so much because it allows me to access a flow state where I turn on a podcast uh, and just kind of like exist plainly for a couple hours at a time. And it's just blissful, like va a blissful vacuum. Yeah, you know it's, it's tricking your brain into feeling accomplishment or that like you aren't wasting time. Like if you really think about almost anything in worth enjoying is a waste of time in the American sense of the word productivity, right? Sure. Like you're not really getting anything done by going down to the lake and spending some time out by the water. But you know, in some way your brain could go like, I'm recharging and this is important and I like doing this thing. And I feel like video games are a good outlet for that or art, Tim, um, or or obviously what I've been doing with my uh, physical poetry. I, I think like each of us in our own ways are kind of like exploring this new time we have to um, different levels of success, I think. Did you say physical poetry? Are you, is that like yoga? I, I mean... It's sort of a it's it's a contortion of the human body to not create the spoken word, but sort of imitate it. And um, of course, you can find videos of my physical uh, my physical poetry on Instagram at Stuart Highcar. Ah, familiar handle. All it's right, my name. We're, we're plugging up at the top now. Huh? <laughs> uh, at I'm a Rossi on on Twitter mm -hmm. and and Insta. And you won't be doom scrolling through my through my pages. Mm, so you positive. Will, you will not find pretty much anything. <laughs> I've been dead on social media for a long time because I have nothing to contribute. Totally that understandable. Totally understandable. But speaking of contributions, maybe it's about time we start talking about the greatest contributors in our society and what we're here to salute. Today. Absolutely. We were talking about learning perhaps even unlearning certain things. Ah. And what better people to help us learn slash unlearn than the teachers of America? That's right. Also being bullied by the United States government right now. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it seems like what we're doing with Statesman Salute, this new form of the show, is, is shining the incredible Statesman spotlight. You know, millions of eyes will suddenly be on this issue that we're talking about this week. And... I mean, it's never been a better week to talk about teachers. Are kids going back to school? Are they not? Who the heck knows? But the teachers shouldn't be there. They absolutely, no one should be going back to schools yet. We've seen what's been happening in all the states that have been rushing to reopen. It's just bullshit. So let's like, let's get that flatly across the line right now. 
that is hardcore bullshit, and the statesmen firmly stand against that shit. Yeah, that's Penn and Teller level bullshit, guys. Yeah, I, I'm really scared for I'm really scared for September or August or whenever the hell. When did you guys start school in your home states? I started like August 15th in Missouri. Yeah, I feel like middle of August was kind of the traditional time. And then as I grew, it became later in August. I don't know why. Yeah, I think I remember that too. Anthony? Yeah, no, I, I feel like I always started uh, last week of August, maybe first week of September. I don't remember early August returns. Oh, here's a question for you. Do you remember the 21st of September? Nice, nice. Yes, that was about three weeks into my schooling. <laughs> right. I do. Okay, so I do understand one argument, but I do believe that it is bad for us to go back to schools and push teachers and students back in. Sure. But schools do provide an essential service of health care or of uh, child care. Child yes. care, we're talking about a meal a day meal. for a lot of kids, two meals a day for some kids. Um, uh, in, like Especially for special needs kids, there's a lot of interactivity and learning there that you cannot have at home. Most kids in general need interaction with other children to not become weird in self freaks. And True. it seems like, hey, they're saying doom scrolling. What's next? Actual doom? I'm worried about these zoomers. What about that video game, huh? <laughs> Crazy. Bloody. I, yeah. I just, you know, like everything else in this country that's not included in the military, you know, budget, you know, it, it, it's severely underfunded. And, you know, I'm no teacher. I, I I just want to lend support to my friends and the the many great teachers that I've known who've shaped my life and support them because all of the voices that I'm hearing are fairly unanimously saying, hey, there's not a way to do this safely across the board. Right. Not, not just the school board, but across the board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. No, but it, genuinely, there's not a really safe way to do this with the funding they have available. Frequently, you know, teachers are expected to stock their classroom supplies out of their own pocket, which is fucking heinous in general. But when you think about the, the supplies that you need in order to make sure that you're keeping kids socially distanced and properly cleaned, like... Uh, it's it's insane how much we expect of teachers today and how little we care about them in society. Um, considering that they are like, like quite literally, and I mean the actual, you know, definition of literally, like these people are the shapers of and the formers, the sculptors, the painters, the the physical poets of um, the next generation's minds. And so we're just sort of like, if the the less we invest in them, the less we invest in the next generation and the more we're going to be old men going like, these damn kids don't know anything about cursive. But then it was all our fault. I mean, yeah, I, technically it is, right? They're going to look back and say like, why didn't you defund the military? And we'll yeah. go, we should have. And that'll just be sort of how it works, right? Which is a, kind of the curse of age, is it not? Hey, hmm. maybe we should stop caring so much about the Pentagon and teach kids more about pentagons. Ah. Uh, Whoa, there you go. Geometry. Right. Yes, yes. One hmm. of the great skills was, in life. Is that a good point? Well, speaking of geometry. <laughs> Five good points. Speaking of geometry, guys, what were your favorite classes in school? We've all went Ooh. to school, right? We went to school for yeah, definitely. 22, basically 22 years of our lives or minus five, I suppose, for the first four. Sure, I yeah. Know. I mean, I would say that the first five years of your life, you're kind of in the school of hard knocks. That's for <laughs> sure. You know, you're, <laughs> you're on all fours. You're on your hands and knees, scraping those knees Ab badly, you know, but learning to get back up every time you fall. Absolutely. So what was your favorite class, Anthony? I always gravitated towards English and, you know, theater classes. Mm. I was always looking for a place where I could do something creative. And those were the classes where I found myself frequently being able to, uh, you know, I was never really super into numbers or... <laughs> It's a good show. <laughs> <laughs> I was never really super into like numbers or science personally, just because like I... I, I appreciate hard facts, right? But I love being creative. I loved expressing myself or I loved, you know, I, I loved picking up something new and spending some time with it, like a like a, a text 
that I've never mm. I've never encountered before. Mm. Like English English always offered me like a bunch of new perspectives. Uh, and I would love uh, living in like a new world for a little pocket of time and reading homework. You know, it all it still felt like homework, but it was the most mm-hmm. interesting that I found frequently. It was easiest to just kind of plow through. It was the one that felt the least like work, right. you know, and was more of like, I feel like I am actually participating in the learning process. I, w- I would wager that most people in the comedy scene would say that one of their favorite classes in middle and high school would be English. Yeah. I, th- I think it kind of opens the doors to a lot of creativity and expression that, you know, you don't really find in a lot of your hard sciences. Right. And the stirring discussions of interpretations and just seeing the different uh, perspectives and takeaways that people would come to. And obviously, you know, not to blow up anybody's spots, but we all knew that everybody was just spark noting frequently and a lot of people weren't putting in the work. What? Yeah, uh, what? You guys that- cheated? I read all 825 pages of Great Expectations. Thank you. <laughs> and I actually liked it. Oh my God, I hated Great Expectations. But I, I'm not a Dickens head. Um, but <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I thought that was the most interesting personally. And theater, of course, like I just sure. loved performing but that was based i only had theater classes offered Mm -hmm. you know two years of my entire schooling career so could you all right i mean you took two years of theater classes uh favorite shakespeare uh i always gravitated towards the scottish play which i will not say i will not say in this space as you know it could curse the rest of the show we need all the luck we can get for this episode (laughs) well we consider the stew stew studio to be a theater of sorts all of life is a play and where you perform is the stage and also the studio is sort of like um the upper mezzanine area where um certain actors would be hiding in the seats and then a spotlight hits them and you're sitting there in the audience going Oh my God! Look at this. Chicago's in the what, is in the aisles too. Mm. That's what this is right. like. I oh, had yeah. a pair of shoes that had <laughs> the Scottish play written on the back of them. That was Whoa. the brand, and I was a theater kid. And I would walk into the theater to go to play practice, and the teacher would say, "Take off your shoes." Well, I mean, you, that's that's, just... that, but that class was taught by Dan Schneider, right? God, no. no, that's also just kind of standard theater protocol, is it not? You just want to get barefoot and have full grip. You want to walk. Huh? You want to walk the wood, as they say. What? <laughs> you weren't. You weren't using maximum grip. My, when you were. My, when you were <laughs> my stage was dangerous. Our stage huh? had nails cut. Like not. It was not well put together Where whatsoever. Did you perform? I performed at Eureka High School in the Susan Almendinger Theater, or what is now known to be. Did wow. you have you had an actual theater? Did you have a theater at your school? Yeah, we had a theater space at both of the campuses. Mm, we had the cafetorium, baby. Ooh. So was the was your favorite teacher within the English department or the theater department? Or I have a lot of teachers that I responded to throughout my schooling career in different ways for different reasons, um, and it really. Like I responded most of the teachers that had empathy and engaged students kind of as equals Um, because, you know, based on my school, it was a very particular situation. It was a private school, former military school. Uh, It was not a military school by the time I went there for like 100 years. But there was still very much that energy where it was separated between boys and girls uh, campuses, one across the street from the other, uh, as they called them. Um, But I had a lot of favorite teachers. Like one of my favorite teachers, uh, two two of my favorite teachers were uh, English teachers, Mr. Poole, who was also my advisor. First name dead. (laughs) Oh my God. Be (laughs) honest, because he's the wittiest guy. Of course he's an English teacher. (laughs) Uh, Mr. Poole, who introduced me to Steely Dan, not personally, Stu, don't get too excited. Uh, Damn. But no, he he was also my advisor. He was also the track and field coach. He was he was a really great guy. I learned a lot from him. Um, even though he wasn't necessarily my exact teaching style, he was a little bit more of a hard ass. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Because like a, a lot of our teachers gravitated more towards like the uh, on the on the guys side, quote unquote. Like there was that st- still that military kind of energy and the like the anger and and strictness in the air. Sure, like the discipline. 
uh, kind of thing. So there were a lot of teachers that kind of gravitated towards that philosophy where it was like, you know, kind of condescending or like, or really just mm. like micromanaging every little thing. Um, That's but, kind of like the great juggle act that teachers have to do, right? Is like connecting with you enough as right. a friend and mentor to like make you learn, but then also make sure they don't do it enough that you feel like you're on the same level as them and can act out right. and have like any decision over what you're doing in the world. Hell yeah. I also loved, my probably my favorite teacher of my entire career was uh, Miss Scapatisi. She was my junior year English teacher. Um, and we read who we read a lot of works in that class that our grades were not ready for. And of course, at that point, you know, our classes were, you know, uh, no longer divided by gender. And we we were reading stuff like The Fountainhead and Sula. And, you mm -hmm. know, that those are some things that, you know, are not <laughs> are not really, uh, the, you know, for instance, Fountainhead is a very dangerous book. Any Ayn Rand book is a dangerous yeah, text I don't in know. the hands of of a of a someone with a child's mind. Of a, yes, of like a teen of a white teen boy mm -hmm. like, you know, but we had really amazing in-depth discussions where she would pick people apart and kind of help them empathize learn to empathize and structure their thoughts in a in a grander way while also treating them you know, as equals who should understand where they were coming from. And um, that was a really great experience. Also, when I was in eighth grade, my history teacher, Mr. Zabinski, really made a big impact on me because he was the first teacher I had that kind of had a lecture style where it almost was like a college professor. Whoa. Uh, but we were in eighth grade and he would come in and do like these grand monologues about entire chunks of history. And it was really stirring and really amazing. And he always made a point to have an inter international or, uh, you know, not strictly nationalist view on, sure. on any event. Um, interesting. So it, it was a very interesting and engaging class, but he did yell at me for farting one time. And I was like, I'm not doing this on purpose, Mr. Z. Well, come on. I wasn't. <laughs> Demerit. Yeah, that's another one. Your PR You're is getting longer and longer. Lying about your farts, dude. Speaking of farts in class, though, I mean, Tim, I know you're a pretty historically famous class farter, and I wanted to know what your favorite classes were, and did you have any favorite teachers as well? There, you know, speaking of farts, there just a total sidebar here. Uh -huh. uh, I had a couple friends on World of Warcraft who I, you know, would talk to for lots of time, but they were like the same age as me. Uh, they lived in Georgia. Uh, while I lived in Missouri. Wait, the country or the state? The the state. Whoa. And uh, they had this thing that they would do in their class where they would set up three people from across the classroom. So like on the left side of the class, there was one person. In the middle, there was another person. And on the right was another person. Mm. And so one person would go, <clears throat> and then the second person would go, <clears throat> and then the third person would go, <sighs> they would do that in unison? No, they would do it in order, you know, they would do it from like left to right or middle, left, right. You know, it just had to be completed in three. So maybe, you know, just maybe, if you would indulge me. <gasps> nice. Wow, okay, that, well, was that brought me smooth as hell. Right back to my favorite teacher in my class. Uh, I had a couple of favorite teachers as well. I had my theater teacher, Miss A, who um, ruled. Uh, she was, you know, very strict and she made me cry a lot and maybe I'm actually kind of convincing myself that she was a good teacher but, <laughs> and that didn't abuse me but uh, you know she was hard headed but very passionate and really got you to think about she got me to think about my career and rethink mm. whether or not I wanted to become a doctor she told me not to become a doctor and told wow, me wow. to go into acting and theater. Can you imagine what? if Dr. <laughs> Seuss's teacher had convinced him not to become a doctor? <laughs> I got to be honest, man. If I'm a parent and my kid comes home and they're like, the theater teacher told me not to be a doctor. He wants me to be an actor. I might have words with that teacher, you know? I I think, you know, Miss A made the right choice for me. I, I think you know. so, but I mean, from, from a parent's perspective, all kids oh, yeah. need to be doctors, scientists, lawyer, president. I, I never, I didn't tell my, my parents until I was already at college that I was a theater major. Wow. Yeah. 
But my other favorite teacher on the opposite side of the spectrum of learning, I had a programming teacher who also taught the digital electronics class, Mr. Schweikart. Wow. And Mr. Schweikart taught programming, digital electronics, basically like anything with computers and programming. He was the only teacher that did that. And that dude was so, so chill about literally everything, despite being a really weird, conservative kind of a guy, gun fanatic that would always talk about guns in class. He let us make mm-hmm. our own forum, like local forum that we could troll each other on. Do you, It sort of sounds like this guy might be like a libertarian. You he know? was a total libertarian and like convinced everybody in the class to become a libertarian. And uh, yeah. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Tim, huh. you've had two teachers so far and both are huh. problematic to say the least. You know, you're right. I, Can you uh, imagine if those kids on the forum had started discussing the fountainhead? And you know, it was that wasn't even out of the question. These kids would troll the shit out of each other ruthlessly. It hey, was oh, not no. a cool... It was called the Freedom Forum. Oh my uh, God, wait, what the yike, fuck? Yike, 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 <laughs> This yike. is supposed to be saluting teachers. You're right. Hmm. Well, he let us do what we want in a very liberal... Hmm. Uh, very cool very cool I went to school in Missouri guys uh Mm -hmm. is there any other teacher that maybe taught you to have more empathy Miss Patel who taught my freshman year biology course was really cool she really liked me because I liked biology at that time too Mm -hmm. and then she became the freshman year principal and became, uh, became like a strict authority figure that I really didn't appreciate sure I don't know Maybe I didn't like any of my teachers in high school. Damn. Well, I you're saying in high school, and that's why I, I'd love to m- move on to myself and sp- speak about elementary school teachers, guys. Oh, I mm. feel like we my don't... My dear Watson, huh? That's... <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to talk about specifically Mrs. Rowe. Whoa! That's right. She was my first and second grade teacher, and she was... A lovely, lovely woman who uh, recognized my goofy group of friends and I really like to draw and make jokes. And every time we had free time, she like put a little table out for us and we went over there and drew and she did her own little thing. And she like, she was very encouraging about people finding the stuff that they like to do, even though you're like, you know, seven or eight or whatever. Like you don't really have that many opinions, but a teacher saying like, wow, this drawing of like a sunflower eating a building is actually very cool and you should keep drawing stuff. It makes you feel like a million bucks as a little kid, you know? Because I don't know about you guys. Personally, not the strongest mathematician. I, you know, I hold my basic maths up here in my head, but pretty much everything past algebra, it was a struggle fest for me, you know? And so like when I did find a teacher who, locked into something that I was really good at or really enjoyed doing. Oh, man, that person will stay with me forever. Another another shout out, of course, Mr. Deming. Uh, he was the he was a history and politics teacher in in high school for me. Only I think uh, he came to our school. He was a new teacher when I was in like 11th grade. And I, I made it uh, a priority for myself to become friends with him. Um, because he didn't know anyone. And I thought that would be kind of silly if, like, we were friends, you know? Right. You wanted an ally in that teacher's lounge. Absolutely. I needed to know what kind of goddamn goss was going down in there, all right? Mm-hmm. We mm. usually think about the coffee in the teacher's lounge. You were looking for that tea. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> sip the coffee, but the only sip I'm interested in, gossip, right? So anyway... um, <laughs> I became very good friends with Mr. Deming. Um, I've met his family. I, uh, I, Aww. what yeah. was the context of that? Honestly, it was me, uh, like making it happen. <laughs> this guy didn't want to be my friend, pretty obviously. But like, I think if you can kind of wear away at a teacher to the point where it's like, we're kind of on the same level, you know, you and I, we both enjoy, we both understand a politics class, like, he really enjoyed teaching that, I think, but I would I would only write papers about like John Quincy Adams every time. And um, I think it was like a joke between us. And one time he gave me an F on one and I was so angry about it because I thought he understood the joke between us uh, about the thing. And honestly, I talked to him uh, during a class about it and uh, actually got that grade up to a C minus, baby. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So wait, 
you made a joke in some class project, you got an F over it, and then boosted you to a C minus. Something that I did a lot in high school was I would quote John Quincy Adams uh, falsely. I would make up quotes attributed to him and put them in papers regardless of the subject because um, <laughs> if you word things in a historical way and then quote it to someone who no one knows really anything or cares to know anything about, it's really not worth researching nor looking it up. But everyone knows that name. They're like, oh, he was a president, right? But they don't know everything he ever said. So you can kind of just like say anything and then quote it to him. And it's like, oh, president said that. <laughs> oh, no. Do you Damn. know what I mean? So I thought he understood that joke between us. And at some point I went too far on the quoting and like made a joke about scooters that obviously he wouldn't have scooters in the 1800s, the early 1800s. Yeah, well... And so, wait, you're right, what, you're right. How did that conversation go down? Like you said, I thought you understood this joke. What the hell? I argued, I think at the time I was a big asshole about it. And I argued that he couldn't prove that John, John Quincy <laughs> Adams had not said this thing and that he <laughs> should not count points off of my test because, because of the lie that I had written. And oh I think God. honestly, he just enjoyed the, the back and forth, you know, the retort, the, re uh, the rhetorical argument, that's politics. And I think that's why I got the C minus. Sure. Maybe he was eyeing you for the speech and debate team. Uh, we didn't have one at my school. We didn't have almost anything at my school. You mm -hmm. either did theater or band, and those were the only two electives. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you did both of those barefoot so you could grip the <laughs> grip the stage Jeez. below you. I was, I was percussion, so I had two sticks in my hand and two sticks in my feet as well at wow. all times. Um, also filled up Mr. Deming's desk with Taco Bell sauce as a senior prank. Oh, no, wow. that's pretty good. You really just like harassed the shit out of this I team. Honestly, like still friends with him on Facebook. Shout out to his daughters, uh, you know, and his lovely wife. He's a very nice man. I hope he's doing well. You think he listens? Does he listen to this? I have sent him personally at least two or three episodes of this podcast. Nice. Whether or not he's listened, I will never know. And probably still will never know. But Mr. Deming, if you're out there, love that hair, buddy. Damn. Um, real quick, I would be remiss if I didn't remiss if I didn't bring up a couple more teachers. Dr. Ebert, super lax and chill guy. A lot of people took advantage. How of many him. thumbs up would you give him? <laughs> I'd give him two big thumbs up. Nice, okay. Incredible guy. Um, I had him for history class and then this amazing, uh, amazing class that he taught called Propaganda and Art. Uh, which was really incredible. Um, a lot of people took advantage of him because they knew that they could get away with a like he he would give you an inch and a lot of people would take a mile just because, you know, they would be like, ah, oh, Dr. Ebert doesn't care. But it's like he, he cares enough to trust you to do the right thing or to come from it in the right place. So, you know, he, he was really an amazing guy, an amazing guidepost uh, at a time when a lot of people kind of needed to see that energy more. Um, and then uh, Mr. Young, who is a fantastic uh, biology teacher and then anatomy and physiology teacher, kind of got me into the sciences. Yeah, you're obsessed with bodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we did dissect a cat in that class, which was terrifying. Oh, yeah. and did you make scary? I, I did that. Did you make the cat snake at the end where it's just like tail, oh. spine, head? Like that's all that's left? No, oh, I don't think so. But I don't want to get too deep into that. That is grim. But um, also... <laughs> Uh, 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 oh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, but taking it back super far, uh, my first grade teacher, Mrs. Pressocrat, was the first teacher that I remembered. Uh, you know, I really was like aware in her classroom, and that's where I made a lot of my like core friendships for the first couple of years of my schooling. Um, and then Mrs. Ho, who taught us directly a lot about empathy. Uh, and um, just made us all better people throughout the course of that class. I think that was like fourth or fifth grade. And that is what a teacher does. For Makes real. you a better person. You Seriously. Know? Yeah. That's what that I think that's what we're here to focus on. I have that's one more teacher. I'm sorry, guys. Mr. Jacobs, also an advisor of mine. Wonderful guy, band teacher. Super, super sweet. You're naming these people, and it's totally fine, but I'm curious, <laughs> do you think they will hear this <laughs> no but like these are just people who who all taught me really great lessons at certain times in my life and um you know a large group of them were kind of around the similar cluster when i did the most of my emotional growth and like mm. you know i took a giant mental leap uh forward when i started having more awareness over what i was doing and um you know they just mean a lot to me and i don't want to leave them unnamed just because I don't want anybody to happen to hear it and feel like I'm playing favorites. Absolutely. I, <laughs> I, I you know, like I, a bad teacher playing favorites, huh? 
Absolutely. Interesting. But sometimes you gotta. Well, hey, we've finished this period. I think it's time to maybe move <clears throat> on to the next class. Wait, I have three more teachers. No. <laughs> okay, fine. You know, <laughs> you know. before we move on to the next segment, uh, I believe we, you know, what are we doing? We're, we just went hey, to class. We're sitting in class. We're in the, class. The bell just went off, right? Like, the teacher isn't even, they're not even in the class. What are they doing? The bell is absolutely going off. And <laughs> the bell is full send right now. No cap. Where is Dr. Rossi? Bring! Class is in session. Whoa. Oh, shit. The teacher's a hottie. It is I, Dr. Rossi. Ooh. Whoa. And on this podcast, I know that you all usually explore the sense of smell, huh? I brought my pencil. Well, this time we're going to enjoy the sense of spell. Spelling! Ugh. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a pop quiz? It's a pop quiz, Hotcha. Pop quiz, Hotcha. <laughs> Just jacking the shit from other podcasts. Everyone say pop quiz, Hotshot. No. <laughs> What's pop quiz, Hotshot from? Comedy Bang Bang. Oh, cool. I've probably, yeah. Hell yeah. No, wait, well, is that it's, from the... Never mind. Fuck this. It's from the soup, I think. Fucking shit. Oh, <laughs> we don't want to steal anything from the soup. Yeah, no, fuck it. I'm going to give you a pop quiz. I have some spelling, spelling, uh, spelling challenges for you. But first, I have a little surprise up my sleeve. I love a oh, surprise shit. when it comes from a teacher. Sometimes it's a good grade. Sometimes it's a special sticker. Sometimes it's maybe a, a special treat. But okay, so Anthony far it seems to be a bowl of water. Anthony has placed a bowl of water on the table and has a plastic bag in his hands. Now, listen, I know you guys are a couple of smart cookies, crunch, crunch. So I'm going to throw a little curveball your way. And I think you'll hit this out of the park. Not only are you going to be spelling the names of a couple state capitals, but you're going to be doing it while doing the teacher's favorite activity, polishing up a bright teacher's pet <laughs> apple. <laughs> so you will be scored. You will be scored on, on the cleanliness of your apple at the end of this. Okay. Oh my but God. also on your results of the spelling bee. I so, love this here. There's a bowl of water. Here are some, here are some paper towels. And the Ew. entire the entire process of the spelling bee, mm -hmm. you have to keep polishing no matter what. Okay. All right? Seems fair. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I'm dipping my paper towel in the water. Tim has done the same, and, and we will begin polishing as soon as you ask your first question. Okay. We're starting with Tim. You're going to be spelling the name of state capitals. Commence polishing. Tim. The capital of Arizona is Phoenix. Spell Phoenix. Phoenix. P-H-O-E-N-I-X. Phoenix. Absolutely. And I did appreciate that you kept scrubbing and maintained eye contact. <laughs> I am All also right. scrubbing. I'm ready. You are. Stu, the mm -hmm. first one for you. Alaska's capital, Juno. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Um, okay. Juno. <laughs> and I'm allowed to ask the judge questions. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you can polish harder. <laughs> well, maybe that'll help. Nope. He's uh, polishing really hard. Juno. J U N O E. Juno. Damn it. Oh, man. Is it just normal? Is it no E? How's it spelled? I bet it's ooh. J U N E A W. Yeah. Or fucking J U. -U. There was like some stuff going yeah, on on the back end of that stuff. thing. My apple looks great, but my, my scorecard, not so, not so much. All right, Tim, on to you for the next one. Florida's state capital, Tallahassee. <sighs> okay. Fuck. Tallahassee. <laughs> Is it two L's or one? Here we go. T A L A H A S S I E. Tallahassee. No. Fuck. Oh, thank God. Thank T A L L A H A S S E E. Two wow. L's. A lot of doubles. Two S's, two E's. What Doubling the hell? up. Man. All right, Stu. Okay. Coming back around to you. <laughs> my Is, my do, apple looks pretty good. Do we get half points for keeping the apple polished while you, also spelling? The apple points will come into play once we've completed the spelling portion. Yeah, come on, Tim. You know that. 
And there better not be any worms in those apples. Oh, we- oh boy. <laughs> Fucking A. All right, <laughs> Stu. Yeah. The capital of Kentucky, Frankfurt. Oh, you this one this. I feel like probably has an E at the end of it as well. <laughs> um, I know, I know what you're thinking, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it, uh, like I bet it's like Frankfort, Forte, uh, Frankfort, sure. Frankfort. All right, Frankfort. F R A N K F U R T. You are wrong. E. No, no way. There's an e at the end. No, it's F R A N K F O R T. Frank Fort. Frank, Frank Fort. Fort. That was deceptive. These teacher. damn yeah. Kentuckians. <laughs> I don't have a single point, but my apple looks like a goddamn mirror. <laughs> All right. Now they're starting to get harder. <laughs> I haven't Tim. gotten any of them. Tim. Vermont's capital, Montpelier. Oh, it's it's it's. It looks like Montpelier. So M O N T P E L I E R Mount Pel- Mount Pelier. Ding ding ding! What? No! Wow! The second point on the board. Okay, I'm gonna really have to go for those APs. Apple points. <laughs> now, <laughs> Stu, mm-hmm. huh? the capital of Wyoming, Cheyenne. Ah, yes, Cheyenne. C H E Y E N N E. Cheyenne. Wow! Mm, absolutely. Thank you. Thank absolutely, you. Absolutely right. I, okay. A good friend of mine in high school had a girlfriend named Cheyenne. Wow. Very nice. Now, let's see those apples. Not particularly funny. The score is currently Tim has two points. Stu has one. Now, who's polished best apples? We're getting some shirt action. They were they were mainly sticking to the paper towels in the water before, but now they're giving it a last minute rub on their shirts. Stu has a, has a light gray shirt. He's pulling it up to reveal some belly, shaking it around a little bit. Tim has a nice black graphic tee on. Now he's breathing on it. I don't appreciate that. Then times of the coronavirus, but... <laughs> All right, let's see those apples. My hold apple them up to is the sunlight. up. Of course, Tim and I know exactly how to hold an apple properly. You hold the wow. butthole and the top hole. Wow, those are some shimmering apples. <laughs> oh my god! What are we getting judged on? Exactly. <laughs> did uh, we do it part- on the? Did we do it on the podcast where we hold our tongues and say apple? That's what we used to do in school all the time. Yeah, I think you've tried <laughs> to do that to us once. <laughs> Pretty funny. Hmm. <laughs> Now, of course, my preferences are very specific. <laughs> I actually mm-hmm. prefer a Granny Smith apple. Do you like the sticker on or off? That's true. I took mine off before. I left mine on so you can see where I got the apple from. It's sort of a flex. It says Gucci on it. Stu gets the apple point. Yes. Which means we're tied. Oh, shit. Two to two. You're putting student against student? Stu is my name. A and curve Dent, ball. my last name. <laughs> A curveball must commence. Wait, is there another portion of this? There's one more apple. What what do you... And? You want us both to polish it? You each need to polish one half of the apple, at which time I will judge. Okay. All right, so... This is an actual (laughs) dusty apple, too. There is... A significant amount of dirt I, on it. I threw this one on the ground and rolled it around. No, Speaking of a dusty apple, uh, these stores have been empty since the beginning of the pandemic, right? Okay. I have, an, I have a new layer to this challenge. Mm-hmm. Did you just come up with it? <laughs> yes, I did just come up with it How on the spot. Tell? I didn't expect Stu to win that tie. I should have just said that Tim won wholesale. No, but I'm a polisher, if anything. It's true. Too deep. Now, you're going to trade back and forth by the letter. But I need you both to spell the capital of Louisiana, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay, so you and I need to work together first to figure out what it is, and then to spell it correctly. I've created a dividing line on the apple so you know which side to stay on. Okay, here is a problem. What are you talking about? Are we really polishing the apple? (laughs) Yes, of course. I, I do. I don't know the capital of Louisiana off the top of my head. I think it's Baton Rouge. I think it is Baton Rouge as well. I also think that is totally wrong. I've begun polishing my half of the apple and I would like to say B. Okay. Well, I think that kind of locks it in, (laughs) honestly. Well, I don't know. Am I right with my first letter? Now trade off the apple. Oh, hold on. Let me get the rest of my half and okay, the apple coming to you. Yours has the sticker half. Okay. Uh, Well, obviously, I'm polishing this apple, and I'm going to be polishing the butthole of the apple as well. Okay. Um, A. 
is, of course, the next letter. Correct. Pass that apple. Oh, well, it could be Baton Rouge, but it could also be um, Battleburg or something like that. Battleburg? You know? Battleburg. Um, T? Mm-hmm. Pass that <laughs> apple. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where's my sticker? Okay. Uh, O? Mm-hmm. Pass that apple. Okay, so far we have three fourths of my favorite politician's are we, name. Are we seriously doing this right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm the teacher. Do you want a detention? Oh, Tim, you almost lost the game with that on your permanent You're record. You're right. I'm. I should stop talking back. I'm going to say N. Nice. Pass that apple. <laughs> apple pass. Okay, now. Good question. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Obviously, my next question, teacher, is are we spelling the letters or do we have to spell the characters? In Baton Rouge, there is notoriously a space. Notoriously, there's a massive space between the words. The space is represented by the space between you passing the apple back and forth. So we can uh, we can say that it's ah, assumed. Mr. Rossi's always one step ahead of us. Probably the smartest teacher in this school. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with then if the space is included. R. Okay. R for riveting podcasting. I won't take the apple until Mr. Rossi tells you to pass it. Pass it over. Oh, thank you. Very smart. <laughs> I don't want to lose any points. All right. Um, can I say O? Oh? Yeah, you can. And you can pass that apple back. Here you go. All right. Now, I will note that you are both doing a very good job of sticking to your sides on your apple. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Rossi. Thank you, Ross, Mr. Rossi. Now, Watch yourself. Yeah. Dr. Rossi, excuse us. Ah. Uh, Dr. Antonius mm. Rossi. Excuse I'm us. I'm marking that down in my notes. It may pay, pay off in the scoring. <laughs> what? Oh, man. But what okay. letter are you on? Exactly. What letter am I on or what letter you? Whoa. Oh. Pass that back. The apple, you mean? All right. A winner has been announced. What? I haven't even said G- we have G. Okay. G? All right. Okay. G, that is correct. You could pass it on over Tim. Okay, Tim has the apple. <sighs> Anything could happen. Baton Rouge. Do I know the last letter? You know you do. E. Wow. My favorite character on Audra. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. We have spelled Baton Rouge, I think, correctly, <laughs> and we've been polishing an apple there's, for what feels like an eternity. There's one more character. What? And it's not a letter. Exclamation point! Still wins! Yes! <laughs> Wait, huh? Ha <laughs> ha! I didn't even get a chance to answer the last question. Baton Rouge is the most exciting capital in America. You should have known. Teacher, I am raising my hand. Yes, Tim. Please check the shine of the apple. Mm, okay. I need to see the apple point. Oh, no. The oh. stem fell off. What? Okay. which wh- Who had the side with the sticker? I had the side with the sticker. Wow. Hmm. Are you eating my apple? Oh. <laughs> Guys, I am afraid that there was another tie after reviewing the <laughs> apple. <laughs> How many more capitals do we have to spell? No, you have to spell the name of another teacher that I was thinking of from earlier that I didn't mention. Oh, Tim. that you didn't mention. Oh, well, I, I, that totally fucks me up. Guys, I know Ebert. What about Mrs. Ho? Guys, I will say you both passed. Okay. Okay. Woo! Stu gets an A plus. Tim, you get a shameful A minus. Wow. It's only fair. My parents told me not to go home a loser, so. Looks wow. like I'm not coming home. Guys, do you feel like you learned during that segment? Not at all. Uh, I did learn how to spell Tallahassee. T-A-L-L-A-H-A-S-S-E-E. Yeah. Hey, nice okay. memory. I guess. That's pretty good. And yeah. Juno, we learned how to spell Juno. Yeah, I guess so. Does studying for a test really teach you how to, how to learn or does it teach you how to memorize? Agreed. True, true hey, sh- that. Hey, if you Whoa. measure all the animals by how good they are at climbing a tree, the fish is always going to look dumb. Whoa. <sighs> you got that. Wow. Well, that was the best game in statesman history. <laughs> Shockingly coming back hot. I can't wait to see what else we're going to get into on this episode. But, but you know, before we do that, we've got to, of course, we, you know, Stu and I just took the test. Mm -hmm. Stu, you got an A plus. I got an A minus. But Anthony, I'm curious what kind of grades you were getting in school. Ah, Wow. It it really depended on the year. 
Um, math was always my weakest subject, and then science uh, was following it up thereafter. Um, I would consistently get higher marks in English and Latin. Latin? Uh, yeah, I took Latin as my language. Dead um, language, but a live class? Please yeah. explain. <laughs> I, I, I took it because I wanted to be different. Uh, I tried learning. I, I did one French class. And I just felt like it wasn't for me. And I was like, I really want to learn how to speak Italian. Um, and I feel like, you know, by studying Latin, it would be the easiest way to like, you know, pick up Latin or, or to, it would be the easiest way to pick up, uh, you know, uh, Italian. Is that how that eventually. works? Are they, I guess they're same place, right? Yeah, it was Kinda. rooted, you know, the, all the love languages are rooted in sure. Latin. Honestly, so, I like that we're I, talking about Latin and Italian culture. It might come up a little later in a different pop quiz. Oh, shit. Uh -oh. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, but yeah, I, uh, guys, I, I had pretty consistently good report cards. I would get mostly A's, a couple B's here and there. And then the only time it would really dip below that would be in particularly harder courses or with teachers that I just didn't really connect with their teaching style. So I'd kind of tune out or if I just had like too many friends in the class and we would just kind of get distracted by messing around because I was, you know, I was a little bit of a class clown. Whoa. Hold on. You? <laughs> just a little bit. You were the joker of your class? Just a little bit. I was very respectful and I would always pay attention. I would do a good job about doing my homework, but I was definitely somebody who could get distracted easily. That was definitely showing up on a lot of my teacher's reports on my report card. It was like, oh, areas of growth, uh, focus. Yeah. Did you guys ever have the thing on your report card that says like, uh, talks too much? Yes. Or like, uh -huh. should jump in less? You know. And it's like, oh, okay, I yeah, get it. I'm sorry. I definitely had a good. I, I definitely had a good sense in a lot of the discussion based classes of like sharing the, sharing the you know opportunity to speak in terms of like feedback and everything because I didn't want to be like a know it all. I was very conscious of. Yeah, like, Anthony, let me just cut you off there. That's something I'm just <laughs> I'm working on still today. Um, um, but yeah, no, my lowest grades ever. I got a D in physics i was in Damn, honors bro i got bumped up into honors physics even though i got a c minus in honors chemistry and i was like hey maybe i should not do honors but i wanted the teacher that was teaching honors um over the teacher who was teaching the regular section and i like everybody was like oh you're up to the challenge you just need to apply yourself sure but physics is basically Math. A science based in math. It's all math, yeah. And and it was just like a double whammy of just absolute poison to me. Uh, and I did not do well. And then yeah. in calculus, I just fucked calculus up hard. I was brick in calculus. Like, I would do fine. Like, I would be able to follow it well in classes when we were all kind of talking through it together. But then the second I was at left to my own devices, I would be like completely fucked. Yeah, I think that's because, you know, speaking out loud, calculus has a lot of real world, like, uh, real world connections. Like, you can explain a lot of the ideas of it, like, out loud through, uh, I guess, just explanation. Like, talking about radiance and degrees and whatnot, uh, every, all sine waves and graphs and whatnot. I fucking hated all of that because I, every time I went home to try and do it, I felt like an idiot. And then I would come to class and feel like, okay, yeah, I do have a grip on this. And then I'd go home and feel like an idiot once again, yeah. which sucks because like you're earning a grade based on your homework, not just completion, but like success yeah. as well, which for me really defeats the purpose, right? Because like right. then it's just encouraging me to cheat or like check my answers and solve it with like something online, right? Yeah. As opposed to like failing to understand my own failures. And, and, and that was... That was something that was kind of through any class I didn't like was one that like didn't allow you to fail gracefully. Yeah, well, I think it's like any education system where or especially in the way that we learn today is like if you're not going to do well on that thing, then it's going to affect you long term. Oh, yeah. And so you feel the need to cheat in order to succeed after high school or middle school or whatever. Yeah. And that's like built into society, right? Because it's like, oh, if you don't know how to do slope, then you're never going to have a job. In yeah. Life. And it's like, that's not true. But at the same time, when you're in sixth grade, it feels like it is. 
Um, and speaking as someone who um, was sick the week we learned Slope, uh, the rest, uh, I'm not joking, like the, it seems like everything in math is built on top of the equation Y equals MX plus B. And if you're not there for the week you learned it, I was lost for three years in math. Yeah. Like I just could not get on top of things. I could not understand things. And it was genuinely because I missed like two or three important days. Yeah. And just didn't, I probably didn't make them up. And that was that was maybe the problem. But yeah, I, I, I speaking from my own experience, I, I think we're pretty similar. I, I did I did well in school. I think I was a, uh, I, I, I knew kind of the way to, it, this really, a big part of why I think I did so well in school was the size of my school. I think in, uh, I was in such a small town and there were 200 something, 300 people in a school from grade six to 12. So like, oh my God. yeah, my graduating class was like 30 people. So like you really knew all of your teachers really well and they also knew you. So if you were screwing up on something, they would bring it to you personally and talk to you about how and why you're screwing it up in a lot of cases because it's like, oh, well, Stu, I know, I, I know what you're good at and I know you're good at the stuff that this has to do with. So let me frame it like that so you'll understand it. That feels great. It also feels great to have a personal relationship with your teacher if you're like a student because it feels like if I'm drowning in whatever's going on, I don't feel scared to talk to this person because I know them as more than just an authority figure who will... Now, that's not to say I didn't have teachers who I'm like, Jesus, you make it so hard to raise a hand in your class because of the way you respond to kids. Yeah. And it is so... It's debilitating and yep. so ridiculous. And it's like, why did you become a teacher if you want to give smug looks to kids when they ask questions to things, they could never know. Oh my God, I, know. I, I, I Honestly, my one of my worst grades came on a physics final. And um, it had to, I, we did, I did so much work. I was trying to, it was this whole thing. Let me backtrack a little bit. Physics, as we started the year, I was scared as hell because I knew it was all math and I was not good at math and I was pretty freaked out about it. But I liked other sciences and it seemed like that was the next step. Speaking of the next step, slope. Um, <laughs> but un unfortunately, at the beginning of the year, our teacher told us that if we all were doing well and we had a certain class average at the end of the year, and it wasn't that high of an average, you know, it was like mid-C or something. Like if, if most people were doing well in the class, we would take a trip as a class to Elage Flags, Six Garden or Six Six Flags Elage Gardens, right? Wow. Which is like holy shit! I've been there. The Denver amusement park of the future. That's a hot amusement park. That temperature shit is hot. and style. You're oh, gonna see man. Tweety Bird walking around in high heel pumps. Not to mention hot in education. Those roller coasters. Literal physics at work. Thick my friend. in parabolas. And so that was the idea, right? And the final for this this class was you rolling a marble down a, a sort of a ramp and it would leave the ramp and you would have to place a bucket somewhere on the floor to catch it. The bucket was very small. The ramp was high up, but you would have all the measurements and all the stuff. And if you did it correctly, you would get like an A plus if it went in the bucket, an A if it hit the bucket and like a B if it hit the outside and it went so on and so forth until it was like, you didn't get anywhere close to this bucket. You really did not do well. I was that last category. I <laughs> thoroughly fucked up on this thing. And the worst part about it was that you had to do your marble test in front of everyone in the class. So like everyone got the stuff, you did all your calculations and then we came up one at a time to, <laughs> to like That's say, rough. this is where my marker was. And then you do your marble test and you're like, <sighs> and uh, man, I was badly embarrassed. That's now, a they, tough one. They I, all watched you rip that field trip experience away. Now, see, that's what I was worried about because I was like, I did so poorly on this, I genuinely think I might drop the grade in my average grade in this class. Like, I was already struggling to stay at like a B minus. I was going to drop into C territory hard with this like F on my final. Like James Cameron <sighs> dropping deep into C territory. <laughs> Jeez, man. Avatar 2. Man. Coming soon. Um, but yeah, it turns out uh, my fears were unnecessary. Uh, we would have known if we were going on that field trip months before. Never went on the field trip. It was never mentioned by that, that teacher again. I held it against him for the rest of my high school career because it's bullshit to promise yeah. children a field trip Whoa. and then take it away from them without a reason. Shit is trash. Not what just a terrible trash. Lesson. It's awful. It's absolutely terrible. It's not just trash. It's the trash that you would find at an amusement park that's like full of funnel cakes and kid pee and puke. That's a stone cold lie. It's exactly a lie, Tim. That's some An bullshit. L I E. Let it. Mm. 
at Long Island Expressway. Oh, wow. the LIE. I like Absolutely. that. Well, speaking of the Long Island Expressway, I'm sure you rode it to class sometimes, Tim. <laughs> you wish I went to class in Missouri. Uh, uh, well, what was your worst class in Missouri? I really, so I struggled in math, you know, like you guys said, <laughs> but I only struggled uh. in math until I got the TI-83 or 84 or whatever, the programmable oh, yeah. calculator. Yeah. Okay. I got my SAT prep program and that had, you know, your, your quadratic equations. formulas yeah. and all of that. But then I learned that you could program it yourself and just input like variables for all the equations for like trigonometry and algebra three. And I aced those classes because of that calculator. Damn. Cheated hardcore. But that's not cheating. Like it tells you how to do that in the back of your book. Like it, because that's what a graphing calculator is supposed to do. Right. Yeah. But it was taught to me as like cheating. Yeah. But like what? What? I know. Uh So I did did really well in those classes at the end of it all, but I really had trouble. There was one time in 10th grade um, uh, English class where we had to read books out loud and specifically Othello. We were reading Othello out loud and I I was playing Iago or something like that. Oh, hell yeah. Can you give me your best Gilbert Gottfried voice? Aflac. Okay. (laughs) That worked. Sure, that yeah. is Gilbert, Definitely. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. Not anymore, but yes. <laughs> um, so I was playing Iago and all of the quizzes in English class for that topic were uh, for quote quizzes. And you'd think that me playing Iago would help me like know the lines. I failed think. every single question and I got a zero on that yeah, quiz. I... Damn. And my teacher brought me in and was like, you were reading the, you were reading the text. Like, why... Did you fail on this? Right. And, and I cried. <laughs> I, had, I literally had no idea why. Interesting. Wow. And I don't. I really don't think quote quizzes are a, a viable form of quizzing English at all. Well, if my stories have taught you anything, it's that quotes can be attributable to anyone, anywhere, <laughs> God, at any time. Yeah. <laughs> and it should not be a metric for testing a child. My worst grade that I ever got was a D minus in sixth grade family and consumer sciences. Because yeah, it was hold split on. Just in smash the brakes. Yeah. Family and consumer sciences in the sixth grade was split into two different courses over two quarters. The first quarter was uh like cooking and baking, and then the second quarter was sewing and hemming. What? In the so in the cooking class, I was fine. You know, that was really easy. We we're baking cookies, we we're baking, you know, really just simple stuff. But then in the sewing class, we were like, you know, we had to use sewing machines. We were, you know, stitching and hemming stuff. And my sewing machine just kept, like, jamming on me. It kept birds nesting underneath the the needle. And I would raise my hand for an entire class period, and the teacher would never come to me. So my project never got finished. I never was able to finish the final project, which was sewing together a pillow. And the teacher gave me a D- in family and consumer sciences because I never finished the final. Ooh. And my dad emailed the teacher uh, very angrily, and I still received that D minus. Damn. Wow. I yeah. look, to be perfectly honest, I'm super jealous that you had like a home ec class. Me it too. was pretty rad. That's insane yeah. because it, I was so sure that that had been removed from all curriculum before we were born. I don't know why, because like I personally think it's. God, I wish I had any of those skills. I learned right. how to I learned how to cook so many things in my twenties yeah. that like I wish I could have made when I was a boy. Did you not have um like family like a family management class? We had not a family but- Yeah, we had no, we had a family management thing that was like part of the health class that was like all about abstinence, right? Oh. But like yeah, it was family management. It was like literally how do you manage not to have a family? You didn't have fake babies? No. no. Yo, we I had fake babies with machines in them that would machines. would record the state of the baby. So you had to like burp it and you had to feed it and you had to put it to sleep Whoa. and it would cry and your teacher would like upload the data from the black box of the baby and grade you on how well you did that day. Yeah, the idea that the baby is a black box so that it can survive plane crashes. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, the baby had a massive spike in trauma here. <laughs> I don't know. I really do wish I had a class like that. I feel like I didn't have anything along those lines. We definitely had a health class that was that was not just about abstinence. It was about safe sex and, you know, Lucky. consent and stuff like that. But I, I which is shockingly, you know, not included in 
every health class, you know, yeah. but we had nothing in terms of preparing for life outside of a school system. And that's something that I feel like frequently people our age are just saying like, why didn't we learn how to do any of this basic shit? One thing that my school, ha our school had a stigma against some classes really shamefully too. Like, uh, like financial, uh, like, you planning. know, account. Uh, yeah. Financial planning, accounting. Like there was one class that was like financial math, accounting, like home accounting math. And, I think the general stigma of that class was all the stupid kids went to that if they couldn't do algebra two. I fucking had the same thing in my class, and it's and so I wish much, it, it's so much bullshit. I and I hate to say that I fell into that trap of thinking like, I oh yeah, this is a. I mean, I I should be taking algebra three, not this, not this class. Because I should, this I need, is the smarter. Yeah, class. I need to keep learning how to do all of these graphs and find points on a chart because that's going to be. Because I'm smart, and that's what smart people right. do, as opposed to being smart about understanding how to budget your finances right. and balance a checkbook. Yeah, like, save up and like accrue interest at a bank, yeah, stuff like that. Things learn, I barely understand as an adult man. Learn what interest is. Like, what the hell? Sure, I know the, what interest is now. Yeah, of the only interest I had in that time, <sighs> girls and video games. Uh, yeah, Halo, Master Chief. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will say that I found frequently that. A lot of my grades, my lowest grades, were not a reflection on my teachers at all. It was just about my brain. Like, I was not, I didn't have the brain for math, science, or languages, usually, just because I feel like they all root in the same sort of learning. Like, you have to learn a basic formula and how to plug it into, you know, sure. how, to, how to plug different inputs into it. And receive different outcomes, you know, form a sentence, form, a, you know, enact a formula. And and I, I really loved like biology and anatomy and physiology, partially because I did have that same great teacher for both of those classes, but also just because I wasn't constantly trying to jam data into it. I wasn't trying to like memorize a table or memorize eight formulas and keep them straight. It was more experiential, and I think that I'm more of that kind of learner. Uh, so teachers that kind of made, it created activities or, or mm -hmm. kind of got our hands dirty with the with the material a little bit more, or discussion classes even, just yeah. kind of like really being able to kind of talk things out with everybody made a huge difference for Part me. Yeah, participatory like activities and discussion, I'd say, is probably also the way I learned. And that's also, I think, one of the reasons I enjoyed those, like, biology kind of classes, even though I might not have been that good at them, was that it was explaining a phenomenon that I, I knew cats existed. I had a cat, <laughs> uh. but dissecting a cat lets you understand the inner workings of like something that exists in your life. Like for me, learning AP calculus was explaining nothing in my regular life. Yeah. Like it, there was nothing that I could connect it to that I did or experienced. So in my head, it was just like, my brain, I think, categorized it as unnecessary. And it, once my brain had made that decision, it's sort of like, well, I'm just not going to take in this info. Even though, like, th the amount of fucking stuff that I do remember and know is that is completely unnecessary is, you know, tenfold. But I, it's, it just has to do with how I think my brain categorized it at the time. But regardless, I, I don't know. Grades are interesting. And the fact that kids have different skills at such a young age and different interests and and like natural aptitudes is really interesting, especially for the fact that um, the American education system in particular really does not care about natural aptitudes um, until you get to college. And even then, you know, there's gen ed courses and things of that nature. But like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I was pretty confident in the subjects I liked and didn't like by the time I hit probably sixth or seventh grade. Like, I definitely knew like, ah, oh, I didn't like really like doing times tables or whatever. But like, it wasn't until sixth or seventh grade when I was like, wow, I'm like not good at math. Like I'm really, it's not that I don't like this. Like I, I these concepts don't quite work for me. But what if that's not your problem? And that's the huh? problem of the way that it is taught in that, Ooh. yeah, you are being punished for not being able to understand this thing. And then you say to yourself, I am bad at it. And therefore I will do badly at it. And then you self-fulfilling prophesize right. and you do bad. Yeah. I mean, that's probably true, right? Is like a, it's a negative input loop for. Yeah. It doesn't let you, it doesn't let you grow at your own pace. Yeah. But that's the problem is like, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'd like last point is like, 
the problem with schools that focus on that is often like, well, you're not actually going to hear what the kid wants to focus on. You're going to hear what the parent wants this kid to focus on in school. And then you're going to be doing that. And like, I, we want so badly to have standardized things so that we can measure all people in the same way. But, you know, back to that metaphor that, you know, the, the honestly, the dumbest kids in my school would put on Facebook once a year is that like, if you grade a fish on climbing a tree, he will look like a dummy. <laughs> but he better at swimming. Yeah, and to the credit, like to the credit of my teachers, they a lot of them did a great job of. Do you want to list and, a few? And, well, this is a this is to the credit, like, and obviously, like, there's a certain amount of privilege inherent in this statement. But a lot of my teachers were really patient with me and would stay after class sometimes, or you know, after school was over, to just run through different problems or different jams I was having. Um, and a lot of the times I would like leave those sessions being like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't get this principle. Yeah. But then the second that I was left to do it alone on my, uh, like on the next test, I would recognize what I was supposed to be doing, but then still just not, uh, not retain it. And I, I do think it is like every kid does learn differently and it is really impossible to standardize learning. And I understand the compulsion too, but it is. It does set teachers up for failure a lot of the mm -hmm. times too, because you know there are just certain things that will never get never get through. And I, I do think that there is a fair amount of like, oh, I know I'm not good at math, so I'll never be good at math. Mm -hmm. I had teachers who were able to break beyond that and say, hey, you're really good at this. You know, let's focus on it or let's break it down this way and, and check it out from this perspective. But. I don't know. Yeah, I, I almost feel like I just wish I'd never taken calculus. Like, I just, I sure. don't use it in my daily life. I don't feel like I gained anything from being in that classroom. And if I could have replaced it with an additional English class, perhaps I could have read, a, you know, a few more great works that could have taught me something else yeah, about being a human. You could have, you know, finished the duology with Atlas Shrugged as well. <laughs> God um, damn it. <laughs> but you mentioned something that, I mean, I we just don't have any time to get into whatsoever, but it's essentially privilege and the insane fact that in America, schools are funded by property taxes in a district instead of statewide. Uh, so, which means the poorest people are going to have the worst schools, which, speaking of a negative input loop, it's literally the worst design you could come up with. And um, oh, yeah. here we are. But thank God we have the Queen Bee Betsy DeVos to save us. Speaking of Queen Bees, the bell just went bring. Wait, the bell? Welcome to my class, huh? kids. Oh, my God. Wait, our new teacher is Mr. Wow, wow. That's right. Mr. Wow, wow is in the class now. And guess oh. what? <laughs> Pop quiz, losers. Oh. Sit down. Get your pencils out. Uh, Whoa! Holy shit, Anthony. Um, do you did you notice this guy has a USMC tattoo on his bicep? The 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 military branch from Halo. I I, <laughs> I didn't bring. He said, "Get your pencils out." I only have a pen. Oh God! What if you have to erase your marks? I can't just cross it out. That'll look ugly in my notes. Here's a mark I'd like erased. Zuckerberg. <laughs> The only mark that you guys are getting demerits for talking so much during my class. Sorry, Mr. That's right. Well, welcome to science class. <gasps> welcome to your pop quiz of science. Are you ready? I'm scared. This I, is not my subject. I'm also a little worried, but let's see. Maybe uh, we'll be good at it and work together. Question one. The mitochondria is the blank of the cell. Uh, a wait. A. Courthouse. B. White House, C, Brick House, D, Power House. I do we? How do we buzz in? Is do we? My class is a class of consensus. We group <laughs> take these tests. Okay. Respect. White House. Final answer. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think this is a classic uh, yeah. science, a meme, as your Zoomers <laughs> might say. Um, my guess would be D, Power House. D, Power House. D for ding ding. You got that one right. Yes. Hell yeah. We're doing great. I'm proud of my students. Huh? Wait, I feel warm inside as well. A teacher's really focusing on us. Question two. Gladys West was an American mathematician responsible for developing the basis of which of the following revolutionizing technologies? A, earthquake prediction. B, solar panels. C, sex robots. Or D, the global positioning system. 
Ooh, okay. See, <laughs> here's something. D is the global positioning system, GPS. Uh -huh. Her last name, West, uh -huh. a direction in the system. Now, mm. do we think West was around before her? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Um, Damn. What that the, is a good point. Do you think we can count out sex robots? I'm not sure, honestly, if we could. I, you know, it's the most, it's jumping off the page for me, but I, I really don't, I don't buy that. I don't think we're. What we, do we count as a sex robot? Do you count like a vibrator? Do you count your cell phone when you're Googling that porn <laughs> in your room? Jeez. <laughs> nice. I thought this was a consensus class. <laughs> Um, what were the first two options? One was solar panels. B was solar pan panels. A was earthquake prediction. Hmm. I think it might be A. I'm kind of feeling that same thing, but my answer's a little shaky. Earthquake. I will let you split this one. Nah, of nah, course nah. we come to consensus, but perhaps we can learn something in a divide. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this teacher... This teacher, there is something. I feel like that was implying that our answer was incorrect. <laughs> okay, well, why don't, how about, do you want, I think it's between GPS and solar panels. I'm guessing solar panels only because the West connection seems almost too strenuous. Oh, I thought it was the, I thought A was the earthquake related thing. I thought that's what I was going to vote for. All right, I say you go, do you want to do A, I'll go B? Yeah. Okay, A, B, like our blood types. A, B, like the rarest form. You guys are wrong. You guys are both wrong. Both and as us? my AP bio teacher would say, you're stupid. Oh, oh my God. Jesus. Yeah. I was so warm a second ago. He was a mean, mean guy. But Gladys West was a black mathematician that founded the basis of the global positioning system Whoa. with her work in geodesy. Wow. Geod sure. Geodesy. I think that's what it's called. Geodesy. Geodesy. And I, read, I read Geodesy and Geiliad in <laughs> <laughs> No talking, no jokes in my oh, class. Oh, oh, the sorry, quiz. sorry okay. Mr. Rum Rum. Question three. Yeah. In 1959, at a research base in Gila Flats, nuclear physicist Jonathan Osterman was disintegrated after leaving the broken watch of his lover, Janie Slater, inside of an intri intrinsic test chamber. After reappearing as the tall, hairless, naked, and blue Dr. Manhattan, what was the chemical symbol for the element that John chose to symbolically grave into his forehead? Isn't this is it, an open answer. Isn't it carbon? Doesn't he do, it's a circle and a dot. This is circle Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. I think he does carbon because he says it's the building block of the universe. Yeah, I, be, I, I think that's correct. If it had been two circles and two dots, it would have been the cootie shot symbol. But, you know... <laughs> Instead, carbon. <laughs> eh, wrong. What? Again, building blocks of the universe, carbon, building blocks of life. Good thinking, but you're not quite there. Ah. Hydrogen is the building block of In the universe. Damn. And I hydrogen, but you haven't even given me the chemical symbol. H. What is that? Thank you. Ding, ding. <laughs> Half point. Oh, okay. Huh? Not bad. I'm half proud of Wait, my students. Is it a half point for both of us? Yeah, so one point. A full oh, point. A full point? Wow. Okay. I'm Question confused. four. Yes? Flatology is the study of what? A, Euclidean geometry. B, the curvature or lack thereof of the universe. C, color temperature variance in F-class longitudinal stars. Or D, farts. Flatology sort of sounds like the study of my ass. <laughs> I think C. C sounded so detailed that I think that that is, that's probably where I'm leaning. Here's something you brought up earlier, Latin. The beginning of this is flat or flatus, as in like, like farts, flatulence. Ah. Oh. I think it might be the study of gaseous excretions of the butt. Hmm. Can we do another split answer? Absolutely not. You got oh, one. Shit. Okay. Well, all right. We can go farts. It's a funny answer, but I think he might be trying to trick us. If we know anything about this guy, he's a tricky SOB. Wow. I think you I think you might be onto something. I, I you know, I would say Eke an answer. Wow, nice. Ugh. Good Latin. Wrong class, but right answer. Correct. Ooh. Yes. Woo. Flatology is the study of farts. Wow. Good day. job, Stu. Good call. You know who's the best uh, fart doctor I know? Dr. Nefario. 
from those darn Despicable Me movies. He mm. made the fart gun we all know and love so much. <laughs> Voiced by Russell Brand, who I wish was teaching our rock and roll history class. Well, I could. It's me, Russell Brand. <laughs> oh, Whoa. no. Me, it's me, Russell Brand, coming in to oh. give, give you the last one, the last question of this one. Mr. Brand, can I have one of your necklaces? Maybe in School of Rock, baby. Okay. <laughs> All right, question five. In 2004, I'm going to drop the voice, Christina, <laughs> Krista McAuliffe... Krista McAuliffe was posthumously awarded a Congressional Space Medal of Honor for her participation as an astronaut aboard Space, Chal Space Shuttle Challenger. Right. Before becoming an astronaut, what job did she hold that made her the first of her kind in space? Is it A, postal worker, B, mechanical engineer, C, firefighter, or D, teacher? I know. Drop it on us then. I know this one. If you know it, drop it on us. Okay. We talked about um, the salt flats earlier. Well, I'm going to drop this answer like a like a D bomb. That's right, D. The answer is D. She was the first teacher in space. Technically, she was not, but you know. Correct. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Krista McAuliffe was the first teacher in space. Fitting the theme of the episode. Whoa! I didn't even think about that, <laughs> Mister Room Room. Really does know what he's doing sometimes. Hell yeah. A teacher that we're all saluting across history. Right? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. More probably just after the Challenger explosion. I don't think we were really saluting her beforehand. I guess that's true. Well, we should have been, and we're doing so now. Statesman salute. The pop quiz is over. You <gasps> guys have earned a D, I think. Oh, what? I, I, five questions. You got two of them right. Right? Two and a half. Oh, wait. Well, you got three points because I gave you both half points. Right. So you have... Okay, so that is a three that, out of five, which a, is a... A D, unfortunately. That is a 60%. That is a 60%. You wow. have earned a D and you're going to uh, detention. Hey, I think... I just have some criticism about your game. I think it was too long and the <laughs> scoring system didn't make that much sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take a bite out of that one. You know, you can <laughs> give me that review at the end of the year. Okay. When this is all said and done and I give you my teacher review that I'm going to throw away. Damn, this guy's cold-blooded. But Shit. I saw him drive into the parking lot in a convertible. <laughs> what are we talking about next? I think the last thing that we really need to focus on in our salute to teachers is what we want to add to teaching curriculum. You know, we've just talked a little bit about charter schools, and we've talked about the different problems that a lot of schools are facing or a lot of the things that we had problems with in school, maybe. Well, now, you know, it takes it takes a very um, weak man to just judge. It takes a strong man to change things, to mm. act, to A-C-T. Uh-huh. Mm. So what we're going to be talking about next is just in a round, you know, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and start just so you guys can get a little bit of, see where the diving board's at, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, we're going to be introducing you to the class that we would be teaching or that we'd want to bring into the curriculum if we were a teacher. Mm. Um, and uh, going first, we mentioned it a little bit earlier. Uh, mine is a um, parlez-vous français? You don't have to, baby, because this is just a French cooking course. Whoa. Whoa. That's right. With Le Cordon Bleu chef Stuart Highcar. Wow. And obviously, <laughs> if that's what was going on, I would be a Michelin star chef. But I want a cooking class in school. The French part, that's fun. But really, learning how to make French versions of food is just learning how to make normal versions of food. Most of our things are French versions. Omelets, you know, um, uh, cheese. That's all French, my man. So... What I'm saying is, let's have a goddamn cooking class for kids again where they can learn a bunch of basic recipes, but then also maybe their final, they go out and just have to follow a much diff much more difficult recipe, you know? Like, yeah. I, I think once you get the basics of cooking down, it's all just following the instructions over and over again, doing simple processes, right? I think, yeah, one thing that I definitely have and still miss out on today is just general cooking vocabulary. Yes. I have no idea what the definition of saute is or what the definition of reducing or reduction is. Wow. Um, sure. Emulsion? I have no idea what the hell that right. is. Yeah, I, I think that's super valuable. I also think it teaches some really great skills in terms of like patience and following direction. Absolutely. And also 
if it is like a collaborative process, like you see in a lot of the home ec kind of cooking classes, it teaches to like share that space and to work together to create something together. And I think that that's, those are really applicable, great skills. And then when you are sent off to college, it teaches you to fend for yourself. So you're not just going to the dining hall and eating fucking Cheerios. Look, every day. we all gained the freshman 15 and recently we've gained the quarantine 30. Not to but- mention <laughs> you come out with a trade and you're yes. able to immediately get a job. You know how right. many kids work in fast food out of like, school. I'm not saying that it's going to make you better at flipping patties, but at least you'll like, I don't know, feel like, eh, okay, that's something I can do and I can bring those skills home in some way. I, right. I just think like, I was a grown man when I properly learned how to cook chicken. And even now, I'm not sure I do it well. I just know that I can cook it thoroughly so as, as to not get sick, you know? Like, I I, I don't know what is rice. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I it's like a it's a it's an especially sad position that I'm in, and by my own doing that I like really don't know how to cook a bowl of rice. I know how to do pasta, right? But but like pa- rice, no way. It's so easy, and I've done it successfully about as many times as I've done it very unsuccessfully. And it's not like I was bad at it and I've gotten better. I just like randomly, I'm like, oh, I fucked up this rice. I totally didn't do it right. Yeah, I also think that one benefit of a cooking class of that sort is that it teaches you to kind of involve yourself with what you're going through in the outside world as well. Like every time you eat a meal, there will be a part of you that's a little more curious about it, maybe. And I just think that creating that kind of jumping off point for your own learning uh, is really valuable. And also, you know, if you're if you're living with your parents it will give you that opportunity mm-hmm. to connect with them at home. Pitch in. And yeah, pitch in and, and you know, have a constructive, like, a uh, constructive, like, way to give back to your household or, or even just to, like, get more involved with, like, your shopping trips. Sure. How about this? Like, it won't, it won't just make you more interested in the meals you eat when you go out. It might give you more respect for the people, the hard workers behind the counter or right. wherever at you're at. Because you're like, I know how much time it actually takes to dice an onion. And I know how much that sucks. Or I know how much, like, how hard it is to properly cook this fish. So I'm very impressed at this restaurant. Like I know personally, my appreciation of going out to eat has increased a million times more since I've learned how to cook a lot of things because I'm like meals taste better because you understand the effort that's gone into it. It didn't just appear 20 minutes after you talked to the waiter. 100%. Yeah. So anyway, if I was Le Chef Stewart, uh, Le Meme Face, I would uh, say me gusta this class. Wow. wow. That's a great, great pick. Tim, how about you? I So, you know, while it wouldn't be a course that... I, I've got two courses. While it wouldn't be a course that I would be, like, pretty qualified to teach at all, I would love to relearn American history mm. through an abolitionist lens where cool. we view presidency, where we view slavery in like more of uh, more, in more of an abolitionist way. I feel right. like we look at the war on drugs as something that just happened and not something that ever like really hugely affected the American populace within uh, within well, our U.S. We don't classes. even look at it as a purposeful move against minorities, right. which as, you know, aides of the Nixon office have record, been recorded saying it was. It was a way to put people of color behind bars that wasn't against civil rights. It is. We now know that it is against their human rights, but at the time, you could sell that to people at home, right? Yeah. It, it's just like, it's a shame that I feel that we're like constantly being brainwashed and continuously brainwashing kids Yeah, in a way. I don't know. No, I think that's extremely valid and very important. It, the other one that I would do is probably like um, a course on maybe like a trades course. Yeah. Like a various, like learning how to- Pokemon cards. Like do electronic, uh, like electric circuits or like putting a plug into a wall, fixing a lamp, you know, basic home repairs that you can do by yourself. Fixing a sink, unclogging a shower. Basic plumbing, yeah. Yeah, so many many schools either view this as like an alternative path for learning um, and you can't get it unless you go to a trade specific school. Um, but also a lot of schools like have similar like programs that are just like quick classes. But I think 
expanding that and kind of making that something that everyone learns at the same time, like these basic household things and also just jumping off points for tr for trades and potential careers that are attainable, you know, I, uh, I, I just think that's a really, really great point. And I, I do find myself constantly wishing I was handier. Yeah. Um, I, I was, I was about to say like, do you guys know in any way how to fix a car? Oh no, I don't even know how to change the oil on a car. Right. I, I can, I can jump a car and that's like about as much as I know how to do stuff. Wait, right you there. can jump a car? <laughs> I actually made a Nike promo video where a Lamborghini <laughs> drives straight at me and I, I, I vert the fuck over this thing in my Mambas. I'd still have one more class that I would teach and it's like an improv or confidence class. Fuck! Was that what you were going to take? We'll see. Well, that's, I feel like <laughs> Let's that, see if you can come up with something else. I don't like public speaking courses because mm -hmm. it's like you're, you're just giving speeches as opposed to getting comfortable with people. Yeah, And I feel like improv specifically has taught me a lot just how to bounce ideas off of... How to embarrass yourself without being embarrassed. Falling graciously. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. I know that it's an eye roller for a lot of people, um, whether they're in the improv yeah. community or not. Nice. <laughs> I, I understand why it, it might seem corny to say, like, everyone should do improv. And yeah, there are a lot of people who should eventually grow out, not grow out, but get out of doing improv at a certain point. But I think if you teach it as a foundational tool, starting really young and then returning to it once every, you know, maybe once a year for a session or every year or two, I just think it's something that you can really learn and grow. And it teaches you a lot of skills about communication and right. self-confidence. And it offers you a lot of, it offers you a space to a be super creative and find your sense of humor, but also it, it, um, teaches you to, yeah, be a, being a good scene partner teaches you a lot of really good life skills uh, if you pay attention uh, and, and extrapolate upon it. And I think like there is, it, it really is the perfect tool to get people out of their shell because you can't start without feeling ridiculous. Like you yeah. have to take the steps to feel comfortable making big choices and sticking to them right away. And I, I think that that is pretty much the only class I would feel qualified to teach <laughs> At any level. <laughs> That's fair. I, I do want to make like the the important point that I think like what you're describing is not like people don't need to be learning how to do like a herald in school. Right. But like it is important to remember that like improv was originally created by Viola Spolin like a hundred years ago to help immigrant children and underprivileged kids in the city of I think Chicago. Um uh be able to communicate, have fun, and learn without um, a serious language component. You know, everybody can play improv games because it's about rhythm, it's about timing, it's about like fun and energy. And it, it, a lot of it is also confidence. You know, that confidence comes with it. It's not what you're mainly teaching, but you get it because of what you're getting, right? And like the system was built for kids to have more comfort and strength in their own beliefs coming from you know, in 1910s Chicago, if you're an immigrant kid, fuck, what a horrible life. But if you can feel even a little bit more confident with your public speaking or whatever it might be because you did a red ball, blue ball, shitty exercise in a room, like, I think that has worth. Right. And I also do think it, it does go a long way to build community and emphasize yeah. community. It's yeah. a communal effort. Um, and, you know, it gives you a lot of opportunity for teachable moments. If people are, you know, making bad mistakes or, you know, saying inappropriate things or like going about uh, improv in an unsupportive way or like trying to steal the spotlight, these are all like valuable lessons that, you know, keep coming back in a million different ways through the rest of your life. So I think that I think that uh, as corny as a lot of people may feel it is, I think that improv does belong in education, even just to help people think in a different way hey, purely. it's corny as hell but call me christopher nolan on the set of interstellar because i just created a whole fucking field of corn and sold it off for a profit <laughs> you guys like imdb trivia wow uh yeah that's a class yeah mm. <laughs> Actually, you want to teach that in school well i kind of think that like IMDb trivia is kind of history in its own right, you know? <laughs> Aren't oh, movies God. like the history that we teach each other? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I guess teach. Oh, 
You noticed. Sorry. I kind of like to talk to my students as if I'm <laughs> one of them. Oh, man. <laughs> so I want to come to you guys today, not as a teacher, but as a peer who wants to walk you through, I don't know, some classic history in a pop quiz. Oh, shit. Oh, sh that's right. Shoot. Hey, in here, I don't care what you say, as long as you Whoa. don't bring it out to the pastor. Whoa. What the hell? That's, well, okay. Don't try to do it, but I mean, you know, obviously accidents. We're friends. All right, fuck. Hey, you guys uh, ever heard that, uh, here's a famous saying for you. I know this is more English than history, but what city wasn't built in a day? Rome. And someone had to watch over Rome for all the many days it took to build, right? Uh, huh? Huh? <laughs> well, in this pop quiz, <laughs> I'm going to be asking you both a set of true or false questions. And your answer will determine the winner. Now, one at a time, I will tell you each the name of a Roman emperor from between the 1st and 5th century CE. Your job is to tell me, first, is the name I said a real historical emperor or a fake emperor like that Lama Cusco? Wow. Hell yeah. And if they are real, you can earn a bonus point uh, by guessing which century they ruled in between one and five. Cool. Okay. You guys excited about this? Fuck yeah. I am. I took a okay. well. extensive <laughs> class in Roman emperors in Rome. Really? Taught by a guy named Mario Botello. And he was an asshole. Okay, well, I don't like to think of myself as a butthole or a, a, a good Italian-Roman teacher, but I do know my way around a history textbook. And I do know that whatever we do today is tomorrow's history, okay? Sweet, yeah. teach. Hey, let's start with some easy ones. Tony, right, throwing it right over to you. Whoa! That's right. I throw a Frisbee when I ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Emperor Caligula. Real? Fake? You tell me. Real. Ding, 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 ding. That chime will play every time you get a right answer. Nice. We haven't heard the wrong answer, chime. I hope we don't have to today, guys. That's right. He was real. Known for his hard partying, orgy lifestyle. But for an extra point, Anthony, what century did he rule in? You said this was between one and five? This is between one and five CE. Um, I'll put Caligula at four CE. Domine Santo. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is incorrect. Damn. Uh, yeah, we had to hear, hear the negative chime. He actually was uh, like the fourth emperor of Rome in the first century. Right. Okay. Yeah, very early on. Tim, yeah. you got one point from it, though. You should feel really confident, okay? Hell yeah. Yeah, nice. bud. Hey, Tim, first off, I love your shirt. The 1975 are my favorite band. Thanks. My favorite year. Well, I've got a pretty easy question for you, Tim. Emperor Babu. <laughs> Real or fake? Come on. <laughs> well, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to have to take my time with this one, Teach. I don't know. I'm going to give it a big fat false. Different chime played that time, but it was correct. Ah, okay, cool. It sounded, nice it job. sounded like the incorrect answer. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of weird. Uh, once I figured out what the incorrect chime was, I think I... You know, we'll, you, you overcorrect. We'll figure it out as we go. Sure. We're all learning, even though I'm the teacher, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tim, congrats. Not real. No chance for bonus points, but you guys are both tied at one after our opening round. So, hell yeah. wow. Hell yeah. How about a high five between all of us? Ow! Ah. Okay. <laughs> Anthony, frisbee to you. What? <laughs> nice. Emperor Zeno. Real or fake? Fake. Domino Santo. Very uh -huh. real. Emperor Zeno um, was real. Tim, you have a chance to steal if you can tell me what century he ruled it. Oh, man. Okay, I don't know. Fifth, fifth century. Wow, Tim just stole a point from you. Emperor Zeno, the last emperor of Rome. Wow. wow. That's right. They went from A to Z, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, R to Z, actually. Oh, oh technically R to B. Byzantium. Who the fuck is the teacher in this class? You're right. Throw me that frisbee back. Hey, fudge. Who the fudge is the teacher? <laughs> I heard you. Oh. Frisbee. <laughs> nice catch. Hey, Tim. Emperor Galerius Valerius Maximinus. Real oh. or fake? Yeah, I think that's true. I think he is. I think second century Maximus. Domino. 
you got the first part right, but the back half, <laughs> not correct. Not second? No, he was in the uh, the fourth century. Sorry, wow. I, there are a lot of names that look very similar on this list. <laughs> that's not... That's not Marcus Aurelius, right? That's not no, Gladiator. No, um, This man, Emperor Galerius Valerius Maximinus, uh, 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 was a ruler in the fourth century known for his lopsided eyes and persecution of the Christian people. Oh, Maxim. Wow. Maximinus? What is this, math class? Hey, come on, guys. I'm the cool teach. I don't fucking bring that stuff into this room, okay? <laughs> okay. The only thing I bring into this room... <laughs> a fucking spliff. Whoa, Whoa. this is vastly inappropriate. Not at all. Hey, Tony, catch the Frisbee. (laughs) It smells like poop. Also, can I just correct something? (laughs) What? The fudge and spliff. (laughs) Thank you, Timothy. Anthony, Emperor Antonius Sampunius. Wow, great. Sampunius. Sampunius Sampunius. Great first name. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Antonius Sampunius, eh? Um... I'm going to say, I'm going to say fake. False. What does that mean? I'm lost on this. That was correct. You got it right, my man. Yeah. Yeah, I made that one up. I took your name as inspiration. You even threw us off with the mispronunciation of it. Now you know that, guess what? Your teacher actually went to some improv classes before he started teaching, too. Wow. No fudging way. And a couple of marriages, but we're not going to get into that. Tim, frisbee to you. (laughs) Nice catch. Hey, here's an emperor for you. Emperor Gordian II. Real or fake? Gordian, no way. Gordian, not real. (laughs) Unfortunately, Emperor Gordian II, very real. Anthony, you have a chance to steal if you can tell me what century he ruled in. Third century. Damn, Anthony (laughs) got it. Okay. Yeah. You guys are tied at three points. Yeah, nice. yeah. Pretty exciting. <laughs> Emperor Gordian II, uh, the son of Gordian I, um, he ruled jointly with his dad for only three weeks before falling to infection in battle. Ah, I see. Uh, uh, short-lived. Quite right, Tim. Frisbee back, please. <laughs> in my teeth that time. Wow. Didn't even mess up the spliff. <laughs> Tony, Frisbee. <laughs> oh. Uh, no problem, champ. Remember that every time you don't catch it, you get a new opportunity. Okay. Here's a name for you. Emperor Nerva. Real or fake? Emperor Nerva. Nerva. I'm going to say fake. Domino Santos! Unfortunately, do- uh, Emperor huh? Nerva. Very real. But Tim, can you tell me what century between one and five they mm, served in? No, but four. Hmm? No, but four. I don't know it before. Oh, I thought you said before, as in before that time period. Uh, you would have been close. They were alive before that time period, but they ruled in the first century. Dang. Unfortunately, no points will be had on that one, guys. Important Nerva. to remember that Emperor Nerva... What did you say? You said Nerva. You kind of said it in like a Yoda voice. <laughs> no, I didn't, but now I will. I'm pretty sure Nerva, Nerva. was a goddess in Assassin's Creed 2. That- You're thinking of Minerva. Oh. I'm a gamer too, okay? I'm a cool teacher. Remember that. Dang, animus. That's right. I have no animus against y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. But if we don't finish this soon, I think this quiz is going to start getting on the Nervas, all our listeners. All right, yeah. Um, <laughs> Emperor Nerva, by the way, the first of a succession of rulers traditionally known as the Five Good Emperors. That's wow. where Five Guys Burgers gets its name. Anthony. Oh, uh, no. T- uh, Anthony. I, I guessed wrong on Tim. this one, Tim. Frisbee! Ow! Both his eyes are gone. The blind prophet now. Maybe I'll be smart. Emperor Herdrian Pertinax. Real or fake? Come on. Herdrian Pertinax? Herdrian Pertinax. True. Domino <laughs> Santo. That is very fake. It, looked, it sounded so outrageous that yeah. I had to give it a try. Herdrian Pertinax, not a real person. Unfortunately, no way to steal Anthony, but the question is coming back to you as, th- as soon as I throw my Tron disc. Whoa, how many emperors are there? <laughs> there are like 500. There are so many. Way too many, but we're getting to the end of my list here. Uh, Anthony. Yes. Emperor Claudius II of Gothicus. Real or fake? Real. That's yeah. true. That's right. But yeah. what century did he die in? Oh, I'm sorry. 
did he rule in? He also died in it of the plague, famously. I don't know if that helps or hurts you. Do we? Force. Domino Santo. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Actually, the treo, uh, the treta, the third century. Okay. Wow. It comes down to this. Tim, you are one point behind. Behind? Yes. You have oh three God. points. Anthony has four. Huh? <laughs> I've been keeping track. It's honestly been going back and forth because of people stealing points. That's why I, I see, made this I game. The meta is all about balance. So, Tim, this last question's coming to you, and it could tie up everything. Tim. Yes. I need the first one. <laughs> Damn. I'm spinning it in my head. Right. And you're blind. Even that more impressive. Sick. Hey, Anthony, let's not use that word in my class. Okay. Tim. Yes. Emperor Domino, real or fake? Domino. Whoa. Interesting. It Was comes there a down Papus Janus? <laughs> um. No. There was, though, a pretty famous Caesar involved with pizza. <laughs> pizza, pizza. Anyway, Emperor uh, Domino, Emperor real Domino. or fake? I'm going to go with real 5th century. Domino Santos, Damn unfortunately, it. completely incorrect, wow. Tim. Emperor Domino was made up for this game, which means, Anthony, you are the next emperor of Rome. Wow. <laughs> hey, thank you for drawing that four in the classic Roman numerals IV. Yeah, well, if you guys don't mind, I'm feeling pretty uh, screwed up off this spliff, so I'm actually going to go put an IV in myself out in my uh, mini coop. Wow. Well, you know, speaking of Roman numerals, we just watched that show Devs. That V turned out to be a U. Whoa, Crazy. spoilers. Huge spoiler <laughs> if you haven't seen Devs. Huge. Turns out the name is Deus. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I guess if you've made it this far into the episode, maybe you're willing to go a little further. Hey, and you know what? We're going to push you even further with this very last segment that we have. <laughs> this is where we, the statesmen, become teachers ourselves hmm. in developing a way for you, the listener, to learn in a mnemonic device the order in which states were admitted into the union. Exactly. Not only will this give you a comprehensive way to always remember which states joined the union in order, but it will also help you rem uh, remember all 50 states just out of order. I can't believe we're still doing this. Oh, what do you we mean? <laughs> we're at, uh, we, we've been talking about class all day. This is the final part. We're jamming for the final. Yeah, class class lasts until the end of the day. It's Very true. We're only two hours into the podcast. Let's go. Jesus Christ, then let's just power through this thing. All right, so we're just going to go in a round robin, I guess starting with Anthony to Stuart to myself and in a circle. We're just going to go in order. Guys... Do you want to read off this list with me, or do you want me to just give you the first letter of each word? Why don't you go ahead and tell us the first state? Delaware. Anthony. All right, guys. Here's the thing. We're going to get through this. It's one mnemonic device, and there's no looking back. Do we have a pact to support the shit out of each other's decisions here? All three of us have gone through many levels of improv classes. Not in schools, but the, the streets. So, yes, Anthony, I'm here. I will only yes and your state mnemonic choices. I've got your back. And just let's just clarify something. States with two words. We're only doing the first one. Disagree. OK, fine. We're doing <laughs> yes and and we're doing <laughs> <laughs> we are doing both letters now. Oh, boy. <laughs> OK, here we go. Um, wow. This mnemonic device, that means will be more than 50. It will be long. more than 50, but it's going to help our listeners learn the order in which this they is were what admitted. you've been waiting for the whole episode, listeners. So let's get into it. Delaware. Word one. All right. I'm going to start it off hot. Definitely Pennsylvania. Pricing. New Jersey. New. Mm hmm. What about the J? Oh, I have to do the J. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> it's like a to do run run. I do the three. Okay, okay. So definitely, definitely pricing new um, joints. Sick. Georgia. Guy. Guy. Connecticut. Guy crushes. Massachusetts. Many. Maryland. <laughs> uh, many. 
Manifold. Manifold South. Can Carolina. you read me back the last four words? Uh, I'll just do the whole thing. Definitely pressing new joints, guy. Crushes many manifold. South Carolina. Definitely crushing. Definitely pricing new joints. South Carolina. South Carolina. And the last word was manifold. Manifold. So cool. So cool. Period. What a period, period. there. Period. <laughs> new Hampshire. Now here. Virginia. Vaccine. New York. No! You, comma, there's a comma between those. No, comma, no, you. You, North Carolina, never cared, Rhode Island. Really itchy. Really itchy, Vermont. <laughs> really itchy, vagina. Oh, hey, yes and Yes me. and, okay. <laughs> yes and. Sorry, I forgot how to spell vagina. Kentucky. <laughs> um, Only crazy. One. Tennessee. Well, crazy with a K? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, and me. <laughs> yes, and. Tubular. Tubular. Ohio. Ocelots. Ocelot losers for Louisiana. Nice. Indiana. Item. Item. Is there a period in between any of these? Yeah, after Ocelot. Ocelot. Losers. Item. Mississippi. Losers. Items. Make. Itchy. For Illinois. <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Ailments. <laughs> Maine. More so. Missouri. Making. Arkansas. Applesauce. Michigan. Mork. Wait, applesauce is two words, but I'll do it one word. Oh, it's one word. Apple the sauce. Mork. How do you spell mork? M-O-R-K. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, and. Thank you. Florida fudge. Period. Texas. <laughs> this. <laughs> this, I, Iowa. Is. Wisconsin. Wonderful. California. Cool, comma, cool. Comma, cool, Minnesota. Cool mattress. Mattress. <laughs> Oregon, O. I like an exclamation. Uh, I'm going to do period, O, exclamation. O. Oh, like you're remembering to say something? For oh, Kansas. exactly. Okay. K for Kansas. Uh, kitchen. Kitchen, West Virginia. Oh. Kitchen wolves. No, kitchen wolf vikings. Kitchen Wolf Vikings. Oh, yes, and. <laughs> Nevada, never. Nebraska. Never, all caps. Oh, never, never. never. Colorado, Stu, your home state. Kitchen Wolf Vikings, never, never. Crack. Crack. North Dakota. Uh, new. Uh, new. Uh, uh, donuts. Yes. South Dakota. Some donuts. <laughs> donuts. Do an ellipses after the first donut. <laughs> so we... Right. Yeah. Some donuts. Montana. Make. Make. Uh, Washington. Washers. Idaho. Some donuts make washers. Insane. Insane. Wyoming. Would you believe that? But that's one word. I yes, and hyphens. <laughs> Would you believe that? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Utah, um, um, ukulele. So there's a period after what I said. Would you believe, believe that? Would question you, mark. Question mark. Ukulele. Ukulele. On for Oklahoma. On New Mexico. Ukulele on night. Managers Association for Arizona, Alaska, actually H Hawaii hurts. Well, 
We did it. We wow. just made the most interesting piece of podcast oh, content shit. I think I've ever heard. Now, do you guys, I think it is only right that as teachers ourselves, we do this in consensus as one voice. As a single group. I wish you could make the font a little bigger for me. Um, as you know, uh, I smoke spliffs because of my glaucoma. I have bad eyes, but that is the perfect size right there. Thank you so much. All right, let's <clears> do <throat> it on the count of three, y'all. For the teachers, here we go. One, two, three. Definitely pricing new joints. Guy crushes many manifolds. So cool. Now here, vaccine. No, you never cared. Really itchy vagina. Crazy tubular ocelot. Loser's item make itchy ailments. More so making applesauce mork fudge. This is wonderful, cool mattress. Oh, kitchen wolf Vikings never, never crack new donuts. Some donuts make washers insane. Would you believe that? Ukulele on Night Managers Association actually hurts. And this is why education is important. <laughs> I, I, I feel I didn't know that we were able to make two back to back. Banger content. <laughs> wow. This it, has been an interesting one, like, huh? Like we didn't miss a single day. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, fuck the rust. I Hey, put Modern Warfare 2 in the trash because the rust is gone. <laughs> he is the cool teach. Wow. You know, we're going to go around in the circle starting with Anthony to Stewart, then to myself to just talk about how teachers, school, education make us feel. Anthony? Education is super important. Schools are underfunded everywhere. Uh, teachers and children should not be going back to schools yet. Um, there needs to be extensive research and preparation done. Uh, funds poured into schools to make sure they have uh, the ability to take accurate precautions and support um, well before. And I also think that there are many, many other options worth exploring before rushing back to schools and potentially putting people's lives at risk. Uh, even if it's not the people who will directly be in the building, it's putting the lives at risk of everybody who's waiting at home when people return. Uh, I just think it's way too early. And teachers are not only doing a job, they're doing a service to this country, to the world, to all of these individual children. Um, regardless of how you feel about your teacher or, you know, everybody's got a teacher that they didn't respond well to. Um I just think it, that at the end of the day, these are just people like you and me. They're trying their best and they can only do as as well as the tools that they're provided with. And they need as much support as they can get. And the communities need to rally behind them as they are shaping the minds that will lead us forward into the future. And any little thing that you can do to support the teachers in your life Chiefly listening to them at this time and letting them tell you what they need in order to do their job successfully. Um, anything that you can do to support them it, it is important. Remember to leave space for those people to, you know, make their voices heard. I just want to offer this moment to shout out uh, and just send a message of love to all the teachers and former teachers who've been on the podcast before. Uh, you know, Ali Stark, Sam Brady. Um, am I forgetting anybody? I think that we might have had one other. Right. But, but I think it's just a numbers game at that point. Yeah, I mean, these are just some of our friends who, you know, directly were involved in schooling and, you know, perhaps are to this day. But, you know, these are people in our communities and they, they really offer a tremendous service to this country every day and to the world every day. And we love you. We support you. And, um, yeah, just keep learning. And guys... I did bring gum, and I brought enough to share with the class. Oh, Whoa. Dang. Maybe wait till after class. Yeah, maybe after uh, the gonna, recording's I'm gonna done. I'm going to put as much of this in my mouth as I can. Okay. I'm glad well, you're not snorting it. All right. Anthony has put a massive handful of gum in his mouth. Can't wait to hear him do uh, plugs with all that in. Uh, I guess no one will know where to go for Anthony's content. Um, okay. Uh, what do teachers mean to me? Um, well, I really have seven words to say to you. Mean to teacher? Make me screech, sir. I'm P the fucked O. 
when you are rude to these people. Not only do they make absolutely no money, which is insane considering the importance of their job. Not only do they have to supply their own supplies in their in their classrooms, which is, again, insane for the importance of their job. Not only are they willing to risk their lives on a normal year by going in and surrounding themselves with all these dirty little grubbing kids with their nasty hands and sticky faces, but we cannot ask teachers to literally die for our students and for our teachers when every other way we treat them is as garbage. If they were the heroes of our society, if they were paid, you know, six figures to do their job no matter what, maybe you'd have some ground to stand on in terms of like turning to them in this time. But we have treated them as trash and now we need their help to get your fucking stupid kids out of your shitty fucking California house. Fuck you. Hang out with your kids. You you fucking got your wife pregnant or whatever. Like, ha, you, they're your problem. You can deal with them for the summer so that no one has to die of a disease. It's it, This is a very, like, very selfish, horrible thing that's going on right now. But to expand a little bit, I want to do the same thing that Anthony did. Uh, thank any teacher's that have been on the podcast and also any teachers in my own life who I might not have mentioned in the podcast, but who did great things for my confidence and creativity through school. Uh, Mrs. Anderson, big shout out. You know, I know we're already done naming teachers, but had to get it in there. Uh, I sounded like Mr. Smith from The Matrix there. Mrs. Anderson. Anyway, much like The Matrix, I think it's time to unplug this episode. But you know what you can do is plug some of your dollars into a local teacher's union. Um, You can support your local teacher's union by going online, looking up your zip code, along with teacher's union. You'll be able to find um, whoever is unionized in that area. It might be statewide. It might just be your county. Whatever it is, support that union. Those are the only way that teachers are going to be able to fight for rights in a world that is hell-bent on not respecting them and not giving them uh, the credit they deserve in society. Um, Anthony, I just got to say, this gum thing. I can smell it. Yeah, it's it's toxic. It's toxic. Where did that gum come from? I just got it today when I got the apples. <laughs> I, have, I have probably... <laughs> 10 pieces in my mouth minimum. <laughs> Dude, I'm worried about you're going to like swallow that. Hey, hey, we'll get to that in a second. Tim, you have anything to say at the end? You know, just to echo you guys, teachers are probably the most important people in our society. Uh, along with healthcare workers, without teachers, the future doesn't continue to go on. And I think that the COVID-19 pandemic has obviously shown us how important teachers are, not only to just teaching our children and teaching the future, but also providing the essential service of childcare, which is something that we have so undervalued in this country as a whole, whether you're a parent or uh, I guess if you're a parent, you absolutely rely on child service, whether it is a babysitter, uh, the kids going to education, or if, um, yeah, if you just want to go outside. You know, I'm sorry that Anthony laughed when you said babysitter. He was just remembering the great Jonah Hill comedy. Oh, man. Well, you know, it's just illuminated that the need for uh, child care is so overwhelmingly necessary and so overwhelmingly underfunded and underappreciated that, you know, this episode is all about the teachers that do exactly that. So, of course, all three of us salute to them. Anthony, Stu, you got anything to plug at the end of this? Yeah, I certainly do. Uh, you can find me on social media at Stuart Highcar, S-T-U-A-R-T-H-I-C-A-R, like you're saying hi to a car. Uh, my Instagram is full of this physical poetry, like I said earlier, although you're not going to be able to see those videos until you follow the page and have to get through my personal security screening. Um, just because I don't, a lot of this is nude. This is a lot of nude movement because I find, well, I don't need to explain it. You'll see it on the page, but... Um, I don't want people stumbling across that, you know. So obviously just follow the page and you'll probably be able to get that content a few days or weeks after you follow um, or on Twitter. I make funny stuff there. Um, uh, uh, Anthony, do you have anything to plug other than your throat with that gum? You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at <laughs> I'm a Rossi. I am a R O S S I. And I do just want to say... <laughs> Now that the episode is over, 
I just had a blast coming back to the table with you guys. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Ignore the gum for one second. I don't care, man. <laughs> Ignore the gum. I'm trying to be earnest with you. This I'm worried is, about you. This is one of my favorite things <laughs> in the world. Just coming to this fun, creative, goofy space with you guys and having a good time. And I missed it a lot. It really brings me a lot of joy. And I look forward to returning to some sort of consistency and recording more with you fed friends because this this is, makes me so happy and I love you both so much. I love you guys absolutely. And speaking of consistency, Whoa. Anthony's putting in more gum. Anthony, Anthony, what's the consistency of your spit right now? Um, yeah. <laughs> Anthony. Tim, anything to plug? Uh, infected butt on Twitter. That's uh, infected underscore butt. Uh, young garlic, Y U N G underscore garlic on Instagram. If you want to see some of my paintings, or uh, I'm, I like to yell at Lori Lightfoot on Twitter. So if yeah. you want to see me do that, that's really fun. Um, but honestly, I also had a great time, Anthony. Stu, I also had a great time, and I can't wait to do it again. On behalf of my junior statesman, Anthony Rossi, and Stuart Highcar, I'm your elder statesman, Tim Ferrari. Stay positive. What is rice? What? <laughs> that was disgusting. Not